Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, September 13th, 2021. This is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Lynn Diggins? Yes. Eric Hellman? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapterling? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And board administrator this evening, Lauren Costa, is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022, of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. Um, before I get to the next agenda item, I just wanna procedurally just talk about a couple things there. There are a number of items on the agenda tonight. There are a number of items that we'll be receiving public comment on. We also have an open forum um, section of tonight's meeting. And what I would ask is if you are speaking on items um, 13, which is reprecinct thing, 14, the discussion vote on Mass Ave Appleton, 15, proposed removal of trees, and the 17, the opera funding presentation, we will have public participation during those items. So for, for open forum tonight, if it's not on the agenda, that's, that's where we want, um, we would hear from you on open forum. So any of those other four items, there will be time during the specific agenda items. Um, so with that, I will turn to the first item on the agenda, honoring Daniel J. Dunn. Uh, hopefully Mr. Dunn is, is with us this evening. Good evening, Mr. Dunn. Good evening, how are you all? Good, thank you. Thank you for, for joining us. I just wanna give a brief introduction. I, we have some comments from members of the board and then uh, we'd like to hear from you, but we have a tradition on the select board of honoring members who have served the town. Um, Mr. Dunn served between 2011 and 2020. And if people were watching earlier this year, he came back on an interim basis uh, throughout the spring of 2021 from January through the end of town meeting. Um, prior to being on the select board, Dan was a member of the finance committee. And unfortunately, we've, we've had a gift for you. I think you have it now this evening. Um, we couldn't get you into the chambers, but we wanted to honor you as uh, appropriate, appropriately as we could uh, tonight by Zoom and, and thank you for your years of service and, and uh, really acknowledge the great service you've given to the town, both as an elected official, as an appointed official, and since then as a citizen of the town. So uh, Dan, thank you very much for all your years of service. Um, I do want to turn it to other members uh, for, for comments. I'll start with Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for joining us again, Mr. Dunn. Um, I want to 
say first off i'm very jealous of the recent trip that you just had yeah the uh the photos were beautiful as well as the idea of being off of email and phone for five straight days is just a glorious thought that i recommend it someday i'll get but not anytime soon but no i just want to as the chair said thank you for your years of service and i say as a new member on the board i used to sit on the end and i think dan was the second from from the other end and as i was talking i'd see every now and then i see dan nod his head along and i'm like all right i'm on the right track because because dan's on 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 the same page as me so I, you know i have the utmost respect for you and all the work that you've done for years and years and years to the town both as a as a select board member as a finance committee member as a campaign worker you've been involved in all facets of town and the town is certainly better for having you having had you serve on his behalf so thank you Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. My dear Mr. Dunn, you make me smile. You know, and, and I mean, unfortunately, I, I read you the poem it, at the end of, um, of uh, the, the last, well, when you were with, with us being, um, during the interim um, period. So uh, I haven't come up with another one, it, uh, but the sentiments are, are the same. I mean, you're, you're definitely number one. And, and I, I remember when I started covering select board meetings, and, and, and I was always interested in, in what everyone had to say, uh, uh, but but particularly you, and I'm not quite sure why, you know, uh, uh, but but uh, but it, but that's the case, I mean, and it was really a thrill, I mean, uh, uh, being on the board with you when you served me in this last um, interim period, and we got to do the. Um, Go over the 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 articles, the hearings for the the articles, uh, and and I, I really have a lot of respect for you because as you know, you know, uh, I find myself disagreeing with you uh, surprisingly, and 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 we would discuss some things you know, uh, later, and and, and I, I learned a lot, and, and and I really hope to keep in touch, and I'm sure we will, and, and when I have questions, I know that you'll be there, and and I will say the. Only way I probably exceed you is that I have more gray in my beard, you know. So uh, <laughs> it just means that my ca your camera is better than mine. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank well, you. Take, take care. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. So uh, just about ten and a half years ago, I got involved in Arlington politics for the first time. I was running for town meeting, and I called this guy named Dan Dunn out of the blue and I said, hey, I really like your blog about town meeting. You sound like you know what you're talking about. Can I work in your campaign? And to my eternal puzzlement and gratitude, he said yes. Uh, and here I am today. Look what happened. And that is actually not an accident. Dan, you have been a constant inspiration of public service to me and to so many others. You have showed us how to serve your community. A lot of the time that is without glory, I've seen along the way how hard you have worked behind the scenes to bring people together without taking the credit yourself. You have always been thoughtful. You've always been fair to your opponents, to people who have different point of view from you. You've always done the work to really know your thinking and to have good reasons for it. And you've been a terrific human being and uh, all I can say is, as a new board member, if I serve the town half as well as you have, I will have considered my tenure a, a raging success. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you. Um, my colleagues really have pretty much encapsulated it. Um, I too have a nodding head story. Um, I think it was the opposite, though, with Mr. Hards, uh, usually on issues that I was very passionate about, especially in the last year or two of your regular service. If I saw you sh shaking your head, no, I knew I was on the right path. So um, I want to say uh, congratulations to you and G. Um, I'm living vicariously through both of you on your um, professional as well as vacation, sometimes a mix of the two, sometimes not. Um, and I wish both of you nothing but good health and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, and Dan, yeah, whatever you'd like to say, uh, the floor is yours. Sure. Um, I'll be brief. Among other, I think I need to show off what I got. 
um, among, among other things. So I've been using it. It's this chair. And so if you look at it, it's got like my name and it's got my years and it has the seal of the town. And you can see it's, you know, this beautiful hardwood chair. And uh, I am, it was on my front porch when I got home tonight and um, I'm really delighted. It is, uh, so uh, um, thank you all for the kind words. I mean, I have to be like that, that's kind of, those kind of speeches that give you a big head pretty quick. Uh, but I'm really glad, I'm very excited to get the, when I, when I resigned or, or didn't run for re-election, I said that it was an honor to serve the town. It was my pleasure to serve the town. And I was really proud of the things that we've done. And the chair is something that's going to, it's beautiful and it's useful. And it's going to regularly remind me of what we have to be proud of, which is we work on budgets, we will build schools, we set policies, we hire professional leaders, we lead by example. And uh, these decisions are sometimes easy, but they're often hard. And we bring our best, we do our best, and the results are the things that I really am proud of. So thank you all for the kind words. Thank you for the gift. And uh, good luck with the rest of your agenda. <laughs> ben, thank you, Mr. Dunn. And, and truly, it's an honor serving with you. We appreciate the, the words. And, and we know we will see you around town um, active in a number of different things. So thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Um, so item three is acceptance of funds received from various entities. Um, Douglas Heim, Town Council, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as the board has gotten increasingly familiar, uh, chapter 44, section 53A of the general laws outlines the process for accepting certain types of grants and gifts. Uh, it's really just a check to make sure that the board is okay with who is giving us money and what that money is for. In this particular case, um, this is another round of uh, donations to uh, the Health and Human Services Department. Uh, these donations are primarily in two categories, one for COVID-19 testing and services from a variety of sources, uh, and two for various uh, different senior services, ranging from uh, some grants and gifts from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and Leahy Hospital for transportation for seniors to Mount Auburn Hospital providing Wi-Fi hotspots for seniors and the I'm Still Here Foundation, which is uh, an Alzheimer's uh, support organization providing some virtual fitness uh, classes for residents with dementia. Um, obviously, all these gifts are uh, tremendously valuable to the town of Arlington. There's no unusual conditions uh, placed on these uh, gifts or grants. And so with that, I, I would look for a motion to accept this slate of gifts and grants by the select board. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, Mr. Diggins. I will be happy to make the motion to accept um, those funds. I mean, and, and I just want to say um, I'm impressed with um, uh, where they come from. I mean, uh, and, and, and it just it just really goes to show I me mean, how how much we we are part of, of a, a vibrant and caring region. So so um, so, yeah, I'm really thrilled to make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, well said, Mr. Diggins. I second the motion. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Mahan. No questions. Happy to support this. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. No questions as well. Happy to support it. Okay, and I'm happy to support it as well. Um, so, a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, item four, ACAC thank you celebration at Uncle Sam Plaza, Saturday, September 25th. Lori Bogdan, Commissioner for Arts and Culture, Community Engagement Co-Chair. Um, I don't know if she's with us tonight or- Lori's with us and I, I just promoted. I just promoted. Okay, great. Good evening, Lori. Oh, you just need to unmute yourself. Thanks. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm Laurie Bogdan. Um, as you mentioned, I work with the Community Engagement Committee. And you've seen my face a couple of times this summer. I was the project manager for the Go Outdoors project and this year's round of utility box painting. And we would like to celebrate that 
with all of the people that supported us, funded us, and all of the various artists that participated. And we'd like to have a short event um, on Saturday the 25th with a rain date of the 26th. The event will be from three o'clock to four o'clock in Uncle Sam Plaza. And it's pretty straightforward. We need a little extra time to set up and break down if anything is brought there, just to leave it as clean as we found it. Great, no, that sounds great. Thank you very much. I'll turn to the board, uh, Mr. Helmut. Uh, thank you, uh, move approval. Thank you very much for the work that you do for this event and everything else and uh, no, no questions. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, excuse me, a little tickle. I'm certainly happy to second this, and I, I want to thank Lori and everyone on the AC, ACAC um, Community Engagement Committee um, for the various events that you've brought to Arlington. And that's one of the things I think is really a common denominator for everybody who's in the town or comes through the town. So it's very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, and I just want to reiterate too that I really have really enjoyed for years the, the painting, <clears throat> the utility boxes, as everyone else does. And I walk by the door every day, and that that's another gr really great idea. That I think next time it would be nice to see doors all, all in more than one random place in Arlington. I think people would enjoy. It. So that's been a success as well. Um, the only thing that I generally say when we have something at Uncle Sam Plaza is just whether it's some sort of physical barrier or just have people mindful of the fact that Uncle Sam Plaza is right next to the bike path and it's sort of a blind turn there so just make people aware that people aren't kind of drifting out to the bike path and causing accidents but we put it in your good judgment and we're happy to support this. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Yes, and I'm happy to support this too, Ms. Bogdan. And, and uh, I love the door. I love the door. I, 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 I have resisted going through it, you know, but someday there's going to be someone there with a camera and we'll get a picture of me going through it before it goes down. So I'm really happy uh, again to support this. And thanks again for all the work that you and your colleagues do. Thank you, thank you Mr. Diggins. And yeah, I support this as well. And, and thank you, Ms. Bogdan, for, for all the work that you've done. And, and uh, you till the newer utility boxes down by Lake Street. I know one of them has uh, was was being worked on recently. Looks great, and um, and the door has. I I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but it's been really uh, really impressive. So thank you uh, for that as well. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous voting. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You too. <laughs> okay. Next is the consent agenda, which will be items five through nine. Item five is minutes of meetings July 19th, 2021, August 9th, 2021, August 16th, 2021, uh, which was a joint meeting with the Arlington Board of Assessors. Uh, number six is a request for a contractor drain layer license, GCS paving. Number seven for approval, Arlington Kid Care Group leaders, special municipal employees. Number eight is an appointment to the Transportation Advisory Committee, an associate member to a full member, Tycho Nightingale. Number nine is a request for an extension of parking for Whittemore Park phase one construction. Ali Carter, the Economic Development Coordinator. Um, I will turn to the board, Mrs. Mahan. Move approval. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins, any comments, questions? Uh, no comments, questions. Mr. Helmuth. Oh. Nothing for me, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Hahn. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. D uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. Okay. Item 10 under appointments. Uh, we have a number of appointments to the Arlington Affordable 
House Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund trustees, uh, Benjamin Bradlow, Marian Donovan, Karen Kelleher, Neil Mongold, Jacqueline Paseo, Calpurnia Roberts, and Philip Tedesco. Um, this, as people know, the Housing Trust Fund was created this past year. Uh, there were a number of appointments that were to be made by the select board. We still have one more appointment that I will put on the agenda for our next meeting. And where there are a number of, of uh, individuals here, I'm gonna turn it to the board for any comments or questions and then ask for one vote. But I do wanna thank all the prospective trustees for their willingness to serve and, and for being with us here this evening. So I will turn first to Mr. Hurd. We'll move approval of all the appointments listed and just thank everyone for their willingness to serve. It's a new committee and it's a little bit un unknown, um, but I think we have a really qualified group of people here and we know that you guys will do well with something that's very important and there's a lot of attention to and a lot of excitement for. So I look forward to working with you all in the next few years. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes, I, I, I'd like to um, echo um, how my, my colleague and, and um, I mean, I'm sorry, did you make the motion, Mr. Hurd? And, and so I'll second it. You know, I, was, I was focused on something else because I was, I was looking for uh, one of the appointees and I'm not um, seeing her. Is it is Jacqueline? Jacelyn here? No? Oh yeah, there's, there you are. Okay, great. Uh, so um, it look at me. I, I read through all of the resumes and CVs, and, and every single one of you uh, is 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 very impressive. Uh, uh, I, um, I I I mean, um, for um, Phil is Phil here? Phil, you know, uh, I really appreciate all your hard work. I mean, uh, and I gotta tell you, I mean, I, I don't know if you can walk I mean, uh, half a mile around here without running into someone from New Orleans. And and uh, Phil and I have that in common. So so uh, uh, it's um it's been really great working with you. Uh, at least trying to help you and support you with the ADU um, project. You know that was very successful in the last town meeting. Uh, and uh, to Ms. Kelleher, it uh it's really great to see you involved in this. You know that I have just tremendous respect for you, and and I'm happy to see you going for a position that I would have begged you uh, to take. So so thank you once again. It's been a pleasure working with you on the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. Um, Ms. Donovan, I mean, your personal story is really compelling. And, and, and I mean, I admire your tenacity and 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 just be your efforts to just to contribute and, and, and make the best out of a tough situation. So uh, thank you for, for um, being willing to be a part of the the, the first set of trustees. Uh, and um, to Mr. Um, Mongol, a, a ACA 20 years plus, being enough set with that, huh? So you're definitely qualified. And uh, to um, Mr. Bradlaw, it, uh, if I am at all smarter, just a little bit, it, uh, 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 it's because he lives next door to me and with the density of, of his intellect, if I just sit outdoors and he passes by, I'm gonna be a little bit smarter. So, so it's been great having him for, for a neighbor. And I, I gotta tell you, you know, uh, I, I'm even, even more impressed. I mean, and um, uh, to Ms. Roberts, uh, uh, and I'm sorry, yeah, Ms. Roberts, and uh, you're on, your list of publications, oh my goodness, it, uh, I mean, the, the range, I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm, it, one of the best things about doing this is that you get to see uh, what people have done, I mean, and, and I look forward to reading some of your papers. And, and um, finally, uh, to Ms., how do you say your last name, Pacheco? Pacheco. Pacheco, okay, thank you. Uh, so um, actually for you, I, I have a question. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with, with your work, I mean, but you've done work out in the, the Berkshires. I mean, and so um, are you familiar with Berkshires? Uh, only a little bit. I never dealt with them personally. Okay, all right. Because I was wondering about the, the possibility of using those as a, a source I mean, for funding and providing some funding for 
the, um, the trust fund. You know, it seems like a way to kind of help businesses I mean, and also maybe, you know, get some money into the fund. So, so just an idea. I mean, if you were familiar with them, I'd be interested in your thoughts about it. But if you're not, well, you're not, but maybe we can talk about that. So thank you all very much. And thanks for your indulgence, my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Um, well, there's no way to follow that up, but I don't need to because Len really captured just how strong of a class this is. Thank you for being willing to serve. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a couple of you as well. Uh, and, um, and I know just how good you are and how dedicated you are to this. And I know that you walk into this with open, with open eyes, that you know that this is a brand new entity. It is going to be a challenge to really give it the funding that it needs to, to, to reach its full potential. But I, I couldn't think of a better group that, that will seize the, the chance to be creative, to think big, to think how to communicate the opportunities and the possibilities of this fund to town meeting, to other community leaders, and to residents. So that it'll be so wonderful to have some, some concrete uh, plans and, and suggestions so that when we come to the community to ask for support for this fund, that we'll, we'll be able to show um, some real vision. And, and I know that we're, you'll work really hard for that. So uh, thanks for, for being willing to serve. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my previous colleagues touched on just about all of my points. Some of you I know, um, some of you I recognize your names and have seen you do great things in town. And some of you, um, I'm so impressed and thankful that you came um, Arlington's way and bringing your individual areas of expertise to this newly formed committee. Um, I would say, um, I, I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit about you each individually, um, but as you go forward, I can tell by the CVs and the resumes that you're going to explore, explore every avenue possible of funding twice, um, whether it's CDBG or CPA or going to the town, going to town meeting, the APRA funds. Um, so uh, thank you for all that free <laughs> experience and expertise that the town of Arlington is getting. We, couldn't afford to pay you all, I know that, but for the jobs that you're about to do. So I'm very appreciative. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, and I want to thank you all for, for your willingness to serve. And, and just for clarification, there are six appointees by the select board. Mr. Bradlow is the town manager's appointment or designee as the ex officio member. We still need to select a member of the select board, which I will put on our next agenda and then the trustees will um the trust and, and the trustees will begin their work and i'm sure they will be back before us so i, I want to thank you all for um the experience that you bring to this and and for your willingness to to um to serve i, I want to recognize Ms. kelleher for her contributions to the town meeting discussions on affordable housing uh these past couple of years you really added a lot to that discussion and uh brought a lot of knowledge to the table so um thank you Unfortunately, we'd love to hear from each one of you tonight, but we're we are rather um, solidly booked on our on our agenda. So we want to recognize you. Thank you for your service, and we will have you in once your um, your work begins, and and we'll have more time at at on that occasion. Um, so thank you, and on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd, yes. Mr. Diggins. I'm seeing a thumbs up from Mr. Diggins. Yeah, yes. Okay. Sorry. Mr. Hel Mr. Yeah. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you, and, and we will see you soon. Thank you. OK. Item 11, the Grants Committee of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, Brian McMurray. Is, is Mr. McMurray here tonight? I just promoted Mr. McMurray and I will go back to uh, changing everybody else back to an attendee. 
Great. Good evening, Mr. McMurray. Um, and, and thank you for your for your interest. I understand you've already been attending a lot of meetings and, and uh, um, we received the information um, asking uh, or recommending you for, for appointment. So where it's one individual, if you wanna say a couple words about your interest and then I will turn it over to the board. Sure, good evening, uh, thank you. I'm Brian McMurray, uh, lived here in Arlington for about four years. Uh, my spouse is a practicing fine artist and I have a background in interactive media. So uh, when I saw that the grants committee uh, was seeking new uh, members, I thought this would be a great way to get involved in local arts scene and help support other artists. Great, thank you very much. I'll turn it to the board, Mr. Diggins. I make the motion to uh, uh, approve of the of Mr. McMurray aim for the position, and I'd just like to um, say that um, that 2009-2010 very interesting year for you, huh? I mean, you could just go to George Harrison or Fish or someone in, in the Dillon Foundation, ask for some money, and we'll be all set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Helmut. Thank you. I gladly second the motion. Thank you, Mr. McMurray, for stepping up. I'm always impressed when uh, someone just starts starts getting involved, just starts attending, and and shows a real interest. And and you know that's what makes Arlington such a great town is that so many people do that. And you know I think your eclectic background, um, you know what you do for your day job and in your past and, and and your spouse and all that will make you actually just expand your your horizons and your critical thinking and your creativity about how to use this, these funds to promote our public art and arts in the, in the community. So, uh, so thanks for stepping up. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to support this motion. And um, you're obviously well-equipped to do this job because you sort of volunteered yourself on your own and. Uh, went and saw what the facets of it were and uh, um, learned all about it. So I don't really see any learning curve for you um, with your previous experience. Um, and even the engineer side, I think you're gonna be able to fit that in somehow, not at all analytical thinking or something like that. So I wanna thank you very much. I'm so happy that um, once again, we have someone here in Arlington that is willing to give their talents just to make this a better place to live. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. And again, just thank you for your willingness to serve. And so much to what my colleagues have said, every time we do an appointment in Arlington for any committee, we are just baffled by the quality of candidates that we have at our disposal in Arlington. It's really amazing the, the people that we have that come out and serve and, and the experience and qualifications that they bring to the position. So thank you for your willingness to serve and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I, I want to echo my colleagues, Mr. McMurray. And, and this is an example of an individual who found an interest. You attended several meetings and you received a unanimous vote from the committee recommending you to join. So it it's uh, you know, congratulations for for taking the initiative on that. And and uh, we really appreciate your willingness to do this uh, to to serve. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Heard? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay. Licenses and permits, item 12 for approval. Food vendor license, Anthony's Eastside Deli, 159 Mass Ave, Jivan Shresta. I believe I promoted Jeevan. Um, let me see. Hi, everyone. Yep, there you go. Good evening. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about the application and, and um, we received some of the written materials and then I will turn it to the board for, for any questions or comments. All right, there's a Jeevan Shrestha trying to bind uh, uh, Anthony's daily. Um, I'm into the business, uh, food business for like 17 years, and my partners 
are there being uh, more than 20 years. So we, we try to do our best to the town. So, you know, we, we run the same business and uh, we later on, we try to add new variety of the food as well. Uh, actually, I'm from the sushi business for 16 years. And I'm uh, working as a district manager for five years for uh, Genji uh, Yelilchi. This is located at the Whole Food Market. Uh, we uh, we have we have uh, almost 178 store in the United States. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I will turn it to the board, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I'm happy to move approval. And uh, thank you for uh, your interest in doing business in Arlington. We wish you the success in the endeavor. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. I'll definitely second that. And um, I know how we all know how difficult starting any small business is. is. And then when you add the restaurant component, um, that's a little bit more of a hill to climb up. But Mr. Uh, Shestra, you certainly have um, seven. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> um, many years of experience. So um, I, I am confident you'll do well here in Arlington. And um, we look forward to seeing and visiting your business often. Thank you so much, Will. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you and welcome. And thank you for investing in Arlington and choosing Arlington to start a business. I have a, a history with Anthony's East Side Deli. My father-in-law is Anthony. He was a former owner. He's not the current owner of the business. So we do love Anthony's and we do often go in there. So good luck with the business. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Yes, and um, yes, and I live close by. I mean, so you'll see me. And just to be clear, um, you're going to be a seven day a week um, operation from 10 to 10? Yes, yeah, seven days okay. a week. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, and I also support the application and I wish you the best of luck uh, with, with your business on Mass Ave. Um, so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Dickens? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Uh, okay, next is open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request before we ask for hands on open forum. I just wanna remind people who may not, or just say again, for people who may not have been here at the beginning of the meeting, we are going to take separate comment on the reprecincting article 13 on article 14 for the discussion and vote of the Mass Ave Appleton for Article 15 for the proposed removal of trees and for Article 17 on the ARPA funding presentation. So if you wanna talk on any of those four, you will be recognized time permitting um, for, for each one of those form, uh, for each one of those items when we get to them because of the way open forum works, we're not gonna act on anything that's brought up during open forum. So if it's something that is not on the agenda, um, that is what we would look to hear from you tonight. I also want to point out before we get to it, under the reprecincting and the ARPA funding, uh, there are going to be continued common periods that the town has, particularly for ARPA funding another week or so. The town manager will get into that later in the meeting. The town clerk is having a forum next week on reprecincting, and there are still opportunities to hear on, on that. I, I will repeat that, but just in the interest of time and in, in the interest of subject matter, so with that, I may have taken longer than the forum is gonna last tonight, but I just wanted to be clear for people who wanna participate. Um, so I'll ask the town manager, is there anybody who wishes to be heard on open forum? Mr. Chair, there's one hand raised, uh, Beth Malofchik. Okay.
Good evening, Ms. Malafchuk. Good evening, select board and Zoom viewers. Beth Malofchek, uh, 20 Russell Street, town meeting member for Precinct 9. I would like to suggest, uh, request that the select board uh, consider doubling the number of trees that are planted each year by the tree warden. I think that in light of the recent UN uh, report that um, that would be one of the essential things that I hope the select board will consider ramping up in terms of um, uh, mediating climate change and um, in terms of protecting and um, invigorating our tree canopy, which as we all know and uh, recognize, I hope, is essential to the community's health and well-being. Um, and uh, so I'll keep that remark brief. Um, uh, as I think pretty much everyone knows, I'm a big tree advocate, but I think reminders are um, always useful. Uh, the other thing I'd like to speak to is I, I am curious as to what the select board is doing to save money and address the overspending. I am aware uh, that there's a, I think a $40 million deficit. I know this was addressed at town meeting on the final evening by the chief of the financial committee. Um, and so I would like to know, and I look forward to hearing from the select board and from town announcements, how the departments are spending money and what um, what initiatives are in place as to prioritizing spending and what each department will be doing. I've been frankly very alarmed at mention by the town clerk about economizing on elections. I think we need to support democracy. We don't need to be saving money in, in that department, certainly, but there are many others where perhaps that could be considered. So I, I look forward to hearing that and uh, most especially again, the trees. Please let's double the number of trees we are planting since across town, many come down for uh, health reasons or they're lost unfortunately in the increasing uh, event of storms due to uh, climate instability. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Malovchuk. Uh, is there anybody else, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine? Let me just verify. No, there is not. Okay, that closes open forum. Uh, item 13 is a discussion for the reprecincting proposal. And we had heard earlier this summer as a result that, that there are two things that are going to be before us as we go throughout the fall and, and uh, perhaps uh, into certainly into October, maybe even into November and beyond. Um, because of the federal census, the population in Arlington has changed. That will result in at least some changes to the precinct map uh, because of changes in population. Uh, because of this every 10 year process with the census, it is also an opportunity to take a look at how precincts are laid out and, and, and the number. The town clerk, Ms. Brazil, has made a proposal to reduce the number of precincts from 21 to 16. What I wanted to continue this evening is to hear from her, hear from any members of the public on how they feel about the number of precincts. Um, I am planning on putting this on for a future vote uh, at our second meeting this September to uh, maybe take a more formal position as to what the board feels about the appropriate number of precincts in between tonight's meeting and the meeting on the 27th, there will be a forum. I think Ms. Brazil will, will reference that in her comments. So with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Brazil um, to uh, provide additional information that she wants to provide in support of that plan. Good evening, Ms. Brazil. Thank you very much. 
Um, I want to just quickly clarify some details and provide an overview of my recommendation to draw 16 precincts instead of 21. I recorded a 12 minute video uh, explaining my recommendation in more detail for 16 precincts and my goals to expand services to voters. So I'll provide the briefest of summaries and not take up time tonight with slides. Um, just to clarify, the draft maps are based on the preliminary data from the state. Normally we wouldn't even uh, likely publish maps that weren't prepared using the actual data. But because of the timeline this year, we did in order to allow the public to engage uh, while there was uh, time for uh, substantive feedback. I did receive the actual data files from the state very late this afternoon. So the working group can start um, on revisions soon. We are following a process and deadlines established by the Secretary of State. Our responsibility is to do our local review and to draw the best lines that we can. Normally, the legislature would use our precincts to construct their districts. If the legislature passes legislation to change that order, I have been told that most likely we would have the option to resubmit our map if we had finalized one that is now incompatible with their district lines. The law uh, sets the standards um, for how to draw the precincts, and I don't want to um, sort of review all of them, but I want to draw attention to uh, the, uh, the rules that speak to, uh, we have to draw precinct boundaries that do not result in the dilution of minority group member votes. And the Voting Rights Act prohibits any voting practice which results in denial or abridgment of the right to vote on account of race or color or membership in a language minority group. As the working group looks at the maps, our goal is to avoid situations where a small number of households are very different from the rest of the precinct. Feedback from residents can draw attention to areas where we need to look more closely. And of course, we'll revisit all the maps now that we have the actual data from the state. The Reprecincting Working Group thinks it's important to go where the data takes us. We can take advantage of new mapping software that makes it uh, possible to adjust the lines as we look at the demographic data. Uh, I know president, pr residents are very curious about the process, so we will continue to add information to the reprecincting link throughout the month. Uh, as Mr. DeCourcy mentioned, uh, our timeline includes a forum next Wednesday, September 22nd, hosted by the League of Women Voters of Arlington and the Election Modernization Committee. That forum will allow for small group discussions so people can really engage um, with some of the complexities. Um, so just quickly summarizing uh, some of the information from my presentation video, 16 precincts is a compromise between the minimum 12 precincts required and our current 21 precincts, which are fairly small compared to most communities. Having close to the minimum number of precincts does increase the risk of having to add a precinct uh, in 10 years. And so a lot of communities build a cushion in uh, for a few extra precincts. Um, the working group believes that we can draw a map of 16 precincts that is more reflective of Arlington's population and more equitable. Fewer precincts make several reforms easier to implement and allows me flexibility in how I staff precincts or central tabulation to accommodate high volumes of mailed ballots. I have requested capital funds for new equipment and I can see the need for new spending on local elections as we implement vote by mail and early voting at town hall. Increased efficiency uh, in investing in new programs and cost effectiveness by not overstaffing on election day is more achievable with 16 precincts. I share the concerns raised about the impact on the number of members for the finance committee. That is a problem we can address by drafting a change to the town manager act for town meetings approval. It takes time for such changes to be enacted. So I think we would also need a short term solution to get us through the preparation of the next budget. If the composition of the finance committee is changed by adopting a 16 precinct map. Some feedback has come directly to the select board members, 
but of the uh, data that we've been, the feedback we've been getting through the Google form, so far we've received 18 comments that speak specifically to the issue of 16 or 21 precincts. Of those, only four comments are opposed. One person was concerned about the distance to the polls being larger. One wants fewer residents per town meeting member, and two are opposed to reducing the number of town meeting members to 240. Uh, on the other side, there are town meeting members who support 16 precincts despite the impact on them, and residents who think 21 precincts is too many and that the smaller lines divide neighborhoods. So I think it's great that we are having the conversations as a community and that we have time to consider the trade-offs and the variety of perspectives. I want to thank you for your time tonight. I don't propose a change like this lightly, but it is my strong belief that 16 precincts is overall better for Arlington and worth the short-term pain as we adjust. We are used to our current map because it's been that way for 50 years, but population and demographic changes over the past 10 years, our shared interest in promoting equity and changes in how elections will be run over the next 10 years, mean it's a great time to consider making a change. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank, thank you, Ms. Brazil. So before I turn to the board, I was gonna open it to comments from the public. We did hear from Mr. Foskett earlier today. I believe he's on the list and I will recognize him uh, next if he, I know he's an attendee, if we can promote him. Good evening, Mr. Foskett. I don't know if he's joined us yet. He, he, if, Mr. Foskett, if you are with us, you need to unmute your microphone. Sorry. Uh, does my uh, video, oh, here it is. Let's see if this works. Yes, thank yes. you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. And uh, thank you to Town Clerk Brazil for having the initiative and energy to propose this change that we're discussing. Um, the current proposal to reduce the number of precincts from 21 to 16 is to me deeply troubling for a number of reasons. Respectfully, I suggest that this proposed disenfranchisement is not one which should be undertaken without broad input from citizens and town meeting itself. A reduction of citizen representation in our most cherished town meeting heritage brought forth, um, brought forward in the middle of a summer vacation period has no broad mandate from the town. And in my view, can, changing it can only serve to increase citizen frustration in the long run. The proposal to reduce the number of precincts from 16, from, uh, to 16 from 21 represents a significant 24% decrease in the number of precincts and neighborhood representation uh, in, town, in town government. And while the propo proposal suggests that the increase, um, in, uh, the, the increase in town meeting members per precinct from uh, 15 to 21 dilutes this effect to only 5% impact, this change also means that town meeting candidates and town meeting members have to reach out to 31% more voters over a larger geographic area in a manner that can only serve to make voter representation communications more cumbersome and, com and complicated, essentially diluting representation. In some discussions, and the town clerk alluded to this tonight, that there might be some financial savings or some efficiency savings. And I looked at this based on some numbers presented by the town clerk earlier in the year. And my understanding is that the, the, the effect is about $18,000 per year at best. This is about one hundredth of a percent of our annual expenditures. This, in subsequent discussions, including tonight, the town clerk implied there would be not necessarily financial savings, but but a repurposement or more efficient use of of um, personnel. But what is this more efficient use, and does this really justify the disenfranchisement that we're dealing with? 
And finally, um, I am concerned as chair of the finance committee, and by the way, I'm sorry I didn't uh, introduce myself, Charles Foskett, Precinct 8, Brantwood Road, and also chair of the finance committee. Um, <clears throat> very troubling to me is the impact on the finance committee for a number of different reasons. Um, many town boards and committees put in a tremendous amount of work, especially the select board and the school committee. And they make, the members of these committees make enormous contributions of their personal time and effort. But in the light of this proposal, the reduction of representation for voters, um, increased burden on the town meeting members and lack of financial benefit, this proposal also moves to impose a much larger workload on the finance committee members who already put in a huge amount of effort with respect to the, uh, the work that they do with only a part-time executive secretary for, as support. Each year we deal with 76 budget categories and numerous warrant articles for, for a budget that you know is $180 million a year. And, and, and the finance committee meets twice per week from the end of January to the beginning of April and uh, that's about 26 meetings, reviewing all of these budgets on a line item basis. The budgets and warrant articles are divided uh, over several working groups so that members can become subject matter experts in individual budgets. And these working groups meet three to five times each. So now the members are meeting maybe 30 or more times for this, for this process. And then in addition, they meet um, each night of town meeting, another eight to 12 meetings. So we're getting into the 40 to 50 meetings a year range. And if there's a special uh, town meeting in the fall, then you need to add another two to four meetings. So as you can see, the burden grows. The, my concern is that if the number of members are reduced, the work that each member has to do is gonna be substantially increased, probably by about 30%. It's already difficult to recruit citizens to join the finance committee, even though there's tremendous personal and emotional reward from civic participation. The work is heavy and long. This proposed change will make the workload heavier and recruiting much more of a challenge. And I would hesitate to think that at some point the committee would be pushed in the direction of seeking more professional paid support, which to me and most committee members would be an anathema. Our representative town meeting system is vibrant, exciting, successful. It's nurtured Arlington for almost hundred years. The current configuration has been operating successfully for more than half a century. It's been led by a series of dedicated town moderators and guided by the policies of thoughtful select boards. I submit to you that this process is not broken, so there's no need to fix it. I strongly urge you to take no action on this proposal. Thank you very much for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. And thank you, Mr. Foskett. Uh, Mr. Chapdelin, is there anybody that else that wishes to be heard on, on this matter or this agenda item? There are right now four hands raised. Okay. Would you like me to keep Ms. Brazil and Mr. Foskett? Sure. As well? Okay, the first, uh, first name is Roderick Holland. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Holland. Uh, good evening, Roderick Holland, um, Precinct 7 Town Meeting Member. Uh, I want at, at this point just to briefly comment on what I regard as the virtue of fine-grained uh, representative town meeting precincts. Um, the fact that we have a representative town meeting means that we're already one step away from the sort of direct town meeting that uh, much smaller New England communities uh, still practice. Um, it's a valuable um, democratic institution and it is the uh, sort of best way to get bottom up um, input into the processes of, of town government. Uh, and I think most of everyone in, in this room has, um, with some exceptions, has been a town meeting member from one, at one time or another. Um, the thing that I wanted to point out is that the current precinct size is actually very manageable 
from the town meeting member perspective. I found when I, I first ran for, for town meeting that I could canvas the uh, Precinct 7 on foot in two or three days. Uh, uh, how long it really took depended a lot on how many people I managed to find and talk to. Uh, but this, this is a scale that, that is actually workable for um, uh, town meeting members who are you know, ordinary citizens. Um, beyond that, uh, the size of, of the precincts um, allow for relationships to uh, grow up so that people know who their town meeting members are and can, you know, go and talk to us when, when they have some question or something that they want to do with um, uh, town government, so it's it's a useful it's a useful um, scale, and that's what I wanted to add. Just Great. thank you, Mr. Holland. Next uh, speaker is Don Seltzer. Okay. Yeah, and for the people who are listed, I said this in open forum. And, and Mr. Holland was well within the timeline, but if you could try to limit your comments to three minutes or less, um, that would be great. I will now recognize Mr. Seltzer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I've sent the board some detailed comments regarding the plans that were submitted for public review. I hope that you've all had a chance to read them and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. I'll just summarize my main points. The two precinct options that were created by the committee are claimed to be fairer or more equitable than our existing precincts. Other than a uh, passing reference made to race, age, home ownership, household income, no explanation has been provided as just how equity is achieved in all of these categories. I have no idea if the committee's goal is to provide an even balance throughout all of our precincts, or if it means the opposite, a deliberate gerrymandering of precinct lines to create precincts where certain groups or interests have greater influence. If that is the case, we should know about it. Second, I am concerned about several of the equity maps that were shown in the video presentation. A close scrutiny of some of them suggests that they were drawn up with flawed data and that are not an accurate depiction of Arlington neighborhoods. I have compared them to the official census data that was released last month, and some of these maps are seriously incorrect. Finally, I share the concern of many in town that the committee did not even consider pursuing the goal of finding the least disruptive solution to reprecincting. They have only presented options in which every town meeting member must run for re-election next year. This is a real burden, both financially and on the time of these residents. And it's not necessary. Only five of our precincts are out of balance and it is possible to draw up new lines in which only eight or nine precincts are affected. These minimally disruptive options should at least be on the table for the public and for this board to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seltzer. And just one brief comment before we recognize the next speaker. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Brazil, but the, the maps that you presented to date are more illustrative of, of what whether it's 16 or 21 precincts. At the end of the day, whatever the number is that's decided, the select board will determine, determine that number and will certainly will look for input. So to the extent that what's being published, that people believe that is what is being proposed, that is not the exact um, outline of, of any of the precincts. I think it was it was for discussion purposes and, and there certainly needs to be more, much more feedback on that. So if, if I, you're nodding your head, so I think that's, uh, you're in agreement with that. But thank, thank you, Mr. Seltzer. Um, next person on the list is Alan Jones. Good evening, Mr. Jones. 
Just need to unmute yourself. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members, and Ms. Brazil. Um, Alan Jones, Precinct 14, and Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, and of course, I, I share the same concerns as Mr. Foskett about the impact on the Finance Committee, uh, which we know can be potentially resolved with a change of the Town Manager Act, but there is the transitional year that uh, Ms. Brazil mentioned. But my question is actually more general about precincts and voting. Um, the process of voting has changed a lot in the last few years and will continue to change with things like extended voting, vote by mail, uh, possibly online voting in the future, a lot of innovations about voting. And my question is about how that has impacted the thinking about precincts and voting and voting locations and such. So I'll leave that as a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, I don't, Mr. Zell, I don't know if you, if you have a brief answer to that or you want to refer to your materials or yeah, I mean, if, uh, certainly I'm happy to speak very briefly. Yes, um, the uh, the more we dig into um, looking at election and election planning um, and understand the likely changes um, to election law that are going to come, um, uh, you know, I, that's been a big part of the uh, of the entire process um, studying that. So, Mr. Jones is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, next speaker, Robin Bergman. Good evening, Ms. Bergman. Hi, good evening. Um, Robin Bergman, Park Avenue, Precinct 12. Um, I want to say first that I agree completely with the remarks given by Mr. Foskett. I also feel that town meeting isn't broke so why do we need to fix it? I like the idea of smaller precincts. They are much more manageable. Um, you can walk the whole district fairly easily. It lends itself to much more interaction with your neighbors. Um, I'm in favor of keeping the 21. Um, a question that I have is, I mean, is there any reason why the budget has to stay the same for elections because I don't think that saving money on democracy issues is the right place to save money, even though I would be in favor of looking at where the budget could be cut. The other specific concern I have in looking at the maps, and I know they're not final, but I'm looking at my own neighborhood. I'm on Park Avenue um, above the water tower and there's a little carve out taking my neighborhood out of the Brackett School area and putting it in with the Dallin School area. But I don't know anybody in that area and it's kind of separating our little part of the neighborhood that's part of the Brackett School neighborhood out, separating us out and putting us in with Dallin. I mean, right now I'm two blocks on foot to my pole. I would have to then drive to vote to the Dallin School. So, I'm not so great uh, in favor of this change. Um, those are my comments, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Bergman. Uh, next is Judith Garber. Good evening, Ms. Garber. Hello, I'm Judith Garber, uh, 130 Mass Ave, um, a Precinct 4 town meeting member. Uh, I'm still learning, weighing the pros and cons on this issue. I really appreciate the discussion. Something that uh, Ms. Brazil said, I was wondering if I could hear more about that. Um, something I hadn't heard about was you were talking about how having larger precincts sort of accommodates more growth in the future. Can you, or is, I'm not sure if I heard that right, but can you talk a little bit more? Is, does that mean that by having larger precincts, if we grow as a town, we won't have to do the re-precincting thing over and over again. Um, Cause I think anything that can help us get into a growth mindset for welcoming more people in the town is, is probably a good thing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Garber. Go ahead, Ms. Brazil. Okay, um, so no, the, um, the uh, what I'm trying to do is provide a cushion if we were to take the smallest number of precincts, um, if you do the mass out, um, they would be very close to, all of them would be very close to the 4,000 person cap. Um, 
Obviously with 21 precincts, we don't have that problem at all. So, but I think a cushion, some cushion is a good idea. And so uh, 16 felt like a reasonable compromise um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, yeah, they had two polling locations, uh, two, uh, two precincts at each polling location, since we have eight right now. Um, just sort of things like that led to the to the 16 number. Okay, thank you. And Kevin, another question. Um, would you say that more for, for more people it'll increase their distance to a polling location because they're having we're having fewer polling locations? There aren't, uh, we're not proposing fewer polling locations. Um, we're proposing that we stick with the ones that we have um, and that it's, um, and actually some people um, are, are I mean, we're, we're right now some, some polling locations serve three different precincts. And so there are some people who are currently traveling a pretty good distance. Um, you know, the, the uh, I think we can do better with, um, with the 16 precinct map on getting people um, if we adjust our polling locations um, and that the select board would want to look at that very carefully, that's their decision as well. So the reprecinct may, may or may not change people's distance to a polling location. It shouldn't make it worse. I mean, someone's always going to be at the edge of a line. Um, yeah. there's, there's no perfect map, yeah. Great. Was it was that it? Was that it, Ms. Garber? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the list is Beth Malovchuk. Good evening again, Ms. Malofchuk. Hello again, uh, Beth Malofchuk, Russell Street. Um, I wanted to uh, support the remarks of Mr. Foskett. I'm very alarmed at the notion of disenfranchisement. Um, and um, I uh, would like to ask, uh, the select board to consider a 21 precinct version um, with the least amount of disruption as suggested by um, Don Seltzer. I think that's a um, avenue that should be examined. I, I never did follow the town clerk's reasoning for um, requiring everyone to run in every precinct. I, I, I just never saw the logic there. Um, so I, I'm very concerned about democracy. Um, it's participatory and um, I, uh, I'm just very alarmed at notions that have been raised uh, from the beginning of this discussion regarding um, efficiencies and saving money profoundly alarmed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Malovchuk. Um, that is it for the number of people wishing to speak. So as I said at the beginning, I, I put this on the agenda tonight to hear from the public um, to provide Ms. Brazil an opportunity and, and anybody else who wanted to speak. I knew Mr. Foskett wanted to speak in this, but I would like to turn it to the board. Again, not looking for a vote tonight on the number, but if there's any questions or comments that board members have, and I'll, I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you've outlined in the town clerk, there are going to be future opportunities in a couple of other forums. And we're not going to vote anything tonight. Um, I will say, um, as of right now, I'm in agreement with Mr. Foskett and others uh, along those sentiments, but um, I want to keep an open mind and see what else comes out in um, the town clerk's forum and um, any other time. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. <clears throat> I, also, I want to thank our wonderful town clerk, clerk for the presentation and all the work on this um, and from the members of the public that provide comments both tonight and via email. 
I also am in one thing I think about, about this process that the town clerk has done very well and I appreciate is the amount of opportunity for the public to be heard. And I do look forward to participating in the forums and he, continuing to hear public comment on this as we get towards the end of September and start to formulate an opinion at this board level as to where we go from here. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I have a lot more um, thinking to do about this, and and I definitely have an open mind. I will just say philosophically, though, for me, I mean, something doesn't have to be broken for one to want to improve upon it. So, so I mean, so I welcome this conversation, uh, even though I don't think the system is broken. And um, I de I do like the fact that we are considering some possibilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Um, I, I, I do. I am really grateful to the to the town clerk for uh, looking for opportunities. I agree with Mr. Diggins that uh, there's nothing wrong. In fact, there's a lot right about looking about how we, we might be able to do things better. I maintain an open mind about this. I'm really glad that the clerk um, led with with a publicity um, effort to solicit feedback. I think that the more feedback we have, the better. So thank you for that. I uh, look forward to the forum next week. Um, I, I want to respectfully diverge from a couple of, of, of my colleagues in town meeting who have used the word disenfranchisement. I, I, don't, I don't see that. I think that's a powerful word. Um, and from what I understand for this plan, it does not diminish or dilute the, represent, the democratic representation of, of residents you know, in town. It changes uh, the number of people and players. But it, to my understanding, everybody still has the same proportionate in representation and in, in power um, to be represented in town meeting. They have, they would increase, we would, you know, an individual resident would have more town meeting members uh, overall. And I think that, you know, going down from 252 to 240 is a change and has an effect. And I think that it is valid to, to disagree with that change. Um, but I would just note that, you know, the state law encourages towns to have as close to 240 town meeting members as possible. So we're not in any way diverging, you know, there as well. I think it's, it's a function of, of the math. So um, that's the only that I have a couple of questions um, other than that, uh, and I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, the first one is, uh, Mr. Uh, if I could, through, through the chair, ask, ask the clerk uh, to remind us if we, uh, what do we have to, what's the minimum number of precincts that we know have to change boundaries regardless wh whether we decide to change the number of, of precincts or not, just based on the demographic shifts. And I understand you just got the final data today, but to the best of your knowledge. Um, all I can say is that the preliminary data and the preliminary map the state provided uh, for the 21 precinct model had um, 19 of the 21 precincts um, shifting. Um, until we actually get the data, um, it's difficult to tell. And it's really a snowball effect. You know, we're, we know there's more concentration that is extremely likely in the East. Um, and so, uh, you know, once you start moving those, um, you have to keep rebalancing across the whole map. Um, and we've, we've had um, 13 and 15 precincts affected the last two times mm -hmm. um, we redrew the maps, so. So if I understand that correctly, it's possible we might, I believe the, the phrase that you used in a prior meeting was a very exciting election. We might, <laughs> with a lot of town meeting members having to run at, the, run at once, which is not something most town meeting members will relish, including this one. Um, but it sounds like that we could be very close to that depending on how the numbers shake out anyway. Right? That's helpful. My other question is, is timing. Um, and I think the one uh, concern I have about making a big change to 16, um, and, and I fully appreciate the advantages that you articulated in your excellent video. Uh, my biggest concern is logistical. Do we have enough time to get such a big change right? And that's a rhetorical question for now, not, not actually asking a question. Um, I think my specific question is we, we know that the state legislature still, uh, we're hearing that they still would like to find a way to draw state and federal legislative districts before uh, municipalities do. So I know that we're on a current timeline and we don't um, we don't um, know what's going to happen. And so we have to we can't sit on our hands. Um, but I guess my real my first question that I actually would love an answer on is 
do we, to what extent do we have to kind of start over once we, if, if we do some work now and we try to work on a 16 precinct map or for that matter, a 21 precinct map. And if the state legislature in next month uh, or November or whatever uh, hands us new districts, uh, what does that do to our plans? Do we start over? How, you know, how, how much rework is there? And, and I guess the context of my question is, my, my anxiety is, do we have time to, um, to make the big change around the margins um, if, if we're handed new legislative districts and given, I don't know, two or three weeks <laughs> to fix them? We don't know. We, do, we don't know what we're going to get. So uh, I welcome a response on any of that, of course. Sure. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, we, we can do it. Um, you have, we have to do it. We can't, um, we can't not do the work on our end of looking at the data and doing our very best to make sure that we are um, drawing fair precinct boundaries. Um, the, you know, the physical process itself of taking the demographic data and drawing a new map is just, you know, a couple hours. So um, if there's a time crunch, um, you know, we can certainly um, do our very best. Well, you know, the reprecincting working group can, you know, take all of the feedback, look at the concerns that have been raised about, um, you know, specific neighborhoods um, and, uh, you know, awkward lines, um, uh, you know, creating, you know, creating issues that we might not have considered. Um, you know, we can, we can do that pretty quickly. Um, so um, it is, it is an awkward situation created by the delay in the federal census, but I think there's nothing to do but keep going. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's probably the only honest answer you, you could give is that we'd find a way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, so I think just my comment on all of that is um, I still, I'm open to it. I think that um, I, do, I do worry about, about this, you know, having to find a way to do it with a big change versus a smaller change. I think that's my one big reservation in this, but I, but I keep an open mind. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And um, yeah, I also want to say I want to continue to keep an open mind on this. I, I will say I'm concerned if we did go from 21 to 16 to go from 252 town meeting members to 240 concerns me. Um, and I, I also am concerned just logistically um, how this what will happen with our house races and, and the precincts for Representative Rogers and Representative Garbley because you potentially run into some difficulty in terms of what our precincts may look like and what the, the house precincts will look like. Doesn't It won't matter to Senator Friedman because she represents all of the town, um, but that is a concern. I also wanna to say to town meeting members, I, I have heard from several, but I, I would like to hear from as many town meeting members as possible on this because this really does affect them. We run on, on an at-large basis on the select board. So it's it, it's town-wide, but to, to hear from town meeting members, I think that opportunity will be given next week at the seminar. I know Mr. Diggins has worked on outreach and, and, um, uh, and, and promoting um, precinct meetings. And, and I think it's important for, for town meeting members to, to weigh, on, weigh in on this, if, if uh, to reach out to us or, or to um, um, contact us in, in any way they see fit. So I appreciate the presentation tonight. I appreciate everybody's comments. And I think we'll either do this at the next meeting or first one in October as I look at the calendar, but we do have to move forward with the process no matter what we do. I appreciate the work that you've done, Ms. Brazil, to, to, to get this going earlier this summer and to, pro to provide information. And uh, we'll see where the information takes us, as you said. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. OK, um, item 14 is next, a discussion and vote of the Mass Ave Appleton Design Review Committee recommendation, Daniel Amstutz, Senior Transportation Planner. Before we begin this discussion, um, I want to let people know that I will be recusing myself from, from this discussion this evening. Um, my sister-in-law is a business owner um, in the block between Appleton Place and Burton Street and um, talked to Attorney Heim. We've also talked to with the State Ethics Commission and I have made a determination that it's appropriate for me to recuse myself from the discussion. So I will step away from the meeting. Our vice chair, Mrs. Mahan, will be running this, this part of, 
uh, this this part of the meeting uh, tonight. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and um, Attorney Hine and my colleagues. Um, I just want to sort of lay out the parameters of how I envision this going. And um, when we get to public comment, I'll have a couple more sentences on that. But um, what I'd like to do with my colleagues' permission is to um, start off with the uh, town manager for sort of an overview. And um, also I think our traf tra traffic engineer, transportation planner, clean energy, Guru, who wears so many hats, so I'm not going to get it right. Then after um, the town manager and Mr. Amstutz um, and any other part of the manager's presentation has finished, I'm going to turn to my colleagues on the board and see if they have any questions on what they've heard so far. Um, then not ask for out, then turn over to the public. Um, and when we get to that part, then the public can have their remarks. Then once that has all finished, um, I'll bring it back um, to my colleagues for further discussion and any possible vote. So with that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to our town manager, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I will give, as you said, a brief overview. Um, also, as you mentioned, we're joined here by senior transportation planner, Daniel Amstutz. I, Jason, I don't know your title, but uh, traffic engineer, uh, or tell me your title. Yeah, traffic engineer with Green International. Firm. Perfect. So J Jason works for Green International, who worked on this project, and I've also brought um, brought up Mike Rademacher, who's the director of public works, who will be able to answer potential questions from the board as well. Um, in introduction, I'll say uh, obviously this has been there's been a lot of work and consideration that has gone into this issue. Uh, there's also clearly, I think, as those tuned in tonight and as board members know. Um, lots of passion around this issue on all, on all sides of it. I I want to make clear I I sent the uh, the board a memo last week, um, making a suggestion for how to potentially consider this matter tonight. Um, and I know in some quarters it's been received as a rejection of one of the options. Uh, it was not intended to be that. Rather, uh, it was intended to be a potential path forward if consensus couldn't be found by the board, given the passions again on all sides of this issue. So with that, um, what I would like to do, uh, if it pleases the board, is ask Jason to present um, an overview of each of the options that have been drafted um, by him and his firm. And then, as you said, uh, Ms. Bahan, turn it to the board for questions. So uh, Jason, do you want me to share the designs or do I want me to give you permission to do that? Uh, yeah, if you want to give me permission, I can bring them up. Okay. All right, let me know if that works. Okay, um, can everyone see the screen okay? Um, is everyone able to see the screen? Yeah, it seems to get, you're getting okay. thumbs up from folks. Yep. Okay, great. All right. So yeah, as uh, Adam mentioned, my name is Jason Govin. I'm the traffic engineer who worked on this project um, with the town. Um, and just a, um, a brief, you know, you folks are probably familiar with the history here. Um, there have been several bicycle crashes here uh, at this intersection of Mass Ave and Appleton Street. And the main um, conflict is between westbound vehicles head, you know, on Mass Ave heading westbound at this intersection and eastbound bicyclists traveling through the intersection. Um, the westbound left turn has collided with several eastbound bicyclists going through the intersection. One of them unfortunately resulting in a fatality um, and several other crashes resulting in injury. Um, so we were brought on by the town um, to look at this intersection and the issues that are occurring here to identify some safety improvements that could be implemented um, to hopefully address or somewhat address these issues to improve the conditions that are out there today. Um, 
So what, when we had talked with the town and developed the scope for this project, you know, the, um, we, we clearly and very early on in the process identified that the, the long-term and preferred solution here uh, will take you know, a, a, um, a lengthy process as far as design and funding goes. Um, it will be, um, you know, if a traffic signal we believe has, you know, in the, in the meetings that we had with the design committee that was deemed, you know, a, a preferred alternative here that would eliminate that conflict potentially and provide the most safety benefits. However, um, that would require uh, additional engineering, lengthy analysis, and um, fund, you know, in a uh, relatively expensive cost at the intersection that needs some time to uh, come to fruition. So what we had done was we um, had identified a scope to uh, come up with some short-term improvements that um, would improve the conditions out there today and could be done relatively quick um, and provide some improvements while a longer term uh, improvement is uh, designed, analyzed, and um, funding is appropriately assigned for that improvement. So we came up with two final alternatives and um, the process for this, we had several meetings, uh, open public meetings with the design review committee uh, where we presented several iterations of these concepts. Um, and we arrived finally at the fourth meeting um, to a final two, two alternatives here. Um, so that's what I'll be presenting now. And these alternatives took into account, you know, our engineering judgments and um, industry standards, as well as input from the public that we received from the first three meetings, as well as input from the design review committee, town DPW, um, and, and those folks. Um, so the first alternative here that hey, I'm showing. Jason, quick, before you get, could you click just one or two clicks to zoom in so the uh, the, uh, the words are a little more legible for those viewing. Sure. Oh, that, is that better? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Great. Uh, so on your screen now, uh, you'll see the short-term option one, um, which this option here, um, it maintains the existing conditions as far as bicycle accommodations go in this stretch. Uh, so folks who aren't familiar with Mass Ave, um, there are bike lanes um, along Mass Ave in this area. However, um, the bike lanes, there's a gap in the but existing bike lanes from about Richardson Avenue in the west where the Dunkin Donuts is um, near Lowell Street um, to the east. Um, and this, this is where uh, that gap exists today in this area. So right in this area, this option maintains the shared lanes um, while in this, what benefit this provides is very early on in the process, we knew that any impacts to on-street parking were going to be sensitive in this area, particularly for the business owners and residents around here. Um, so option one, maintain the shared lanes, um, maintains all of the existing on-street parking supply along Mass Ave that's out there today. Um, with some impacts um, that I'll go over really quick, um, you can see here, Currently, the existing conditions at the intersection, there's an MBTA bus stop just before this crossing, almost within the intersection. Uh, this is not preferred for safety, um, for safety as far as bus operations pulling in and out of here, so close to the intersection and almost within the intersection, but also it will block the view of any pedestrians that are waiting to cross um, this heavy utilized crossing here. Um, there's an existing pedestrian signal system for this crossing. Um, and is heavily utilized for the businesses as well as the nearby school and church. Um, so to improve visibility and safety at the crossing and to improve accessibility for the bus stop, uh, we are proposing to relocate that bus stop uh, from the, its current location to uh, the west, just, out, just downstream of that intersection here. Uh, and what that does is that does eliminate um, a few on-street parking spaces right in front of the leader bank uh, facility here. Um, in addition, there were um, some on-street parking allowed right in this area that I'm showing here that's hatched off uh, where it's um, right at the intersection. Um, the MBTA bus stop is just to the west of there. Um, so to improve safety and bicycle visibility at this intersection in this area, we are proposing to uh, eliminate those two on-street parking spaces right at the intersection there. Um, and similarly, 
you will see that we have some similar restrictions near the crossing at Forest Street and Burton Street with the same idea um, that we have for this crosswalk here, just to improve visibility for the pedestrians that will be waiting to cross at that crossing. Um, but outside of those, um, those small impacts there, uh, we are maintaining the rest of the on-street parking supply. Um, so you will see that although the shared lanes are maintained, uh, we do believe this is a safety benefit for a number of reasons. Uh, one, we have the green uh, high visibility uh, background pavement markings uh, in the background of the shares here, which will improve driver awareness and visibility of the shared lane markings, which are intended to notify and uh, make drivers aware that bicyclists are allowed to be traveling and share the travel lane in this area. We do have some signage improvements um, through warning drivers again to, for further, further notification that bicycles may use the full travel lane. Um, some signs at the intersection that uh, notify, mainly these are geared towards that high, um, high safety issue with that westbound through westbound left vehicle with the eastbound bicyclists. So warning left turns to yield to bicyclists that are crossing the intersection. And then you will see we have the, um, the high visibility sharrows um, frequently through the intersection to highlight that crossing and further um, make that cro bicycle crossing visible to drivers as they approach. Um, so those are the, the bicycle pavement marking improvements um, that are mainly included in this issue, uh, in this improvement. Um, the other main goal that we tried to do to improve safety here is to reduce vehicle travel speeds approaching and through this intersection. Uh, and, a, and a big uh, concern and focus there was particularly the speed of the westbound left turns. So due to the uh, current intersection geometry, at, at this location. Left turns that are traveling westbound on Mass Ave going on to Appleton Street are kind of able to make, it's not really a, a turning maneuver here, it's almost like a veer left. So vehicles can make that left turn onto Appleton Street from the westbound travel lane uh, pretty at a high uh, vehicle travel speed. Uh, so what we wanted to do in the short term to try to improve that uh, and slow those left turn speeds down and tighten the intersection up was to implement a, a, um, a short term or a temporary curb extension here, which tightens up that intersection and makes it more of a 90 degree left turn. So vehicles have to slow down much more than they do today. Um, and the way that we implement that in the short term without getting into curb modifications and uh, geometry modifications, which are more of a long term solution. Um, we, we have the pavement markings here, but we also have the flexible delineator posts, uh, which should further enforce drivers to um, abide by these, this temporary curb extension. So they can't just drive through the pavement markings without taking out several of those delineators, um, which will, could cause um, some damage to their, their vehicles if they choose to do that. Uh, and we also have some delineators that are proposed uh, between Appleton Place and Appleton Street um, here in the center, which will allow prevent vehicles from being able to start that left turning maneuver early and force them to proceed into the intersection and make that left turn at the appropriate location. Um, so these, uh, these measures should uh, slow down the vehicle travel speeds for those westbound left turns. Um, and I should note that the DPW did implement this geometry change uh, over two weeknights during the summer. Um, and they, they did this through the use of cones where they simulated this curb extension um, along uh, between Mass uh, Appleton Street and Appleton Place. Um, and it was found that these improvements and that, that setup there with the curb extension did drastically slow down these left turn vehicles um, and it, it accomplished the goal that we were trying to do, which is slow those speeds down. Um, in addition, we do have some radar speed feedback displays that will be proposed as you are along Mass Ave approaching this intersection. Those have been found through numerous studies and data shows that those are effective in reducing tr vehicle travel speeds in the area of which those displays are installed. Um, and we do have a potential R rectangular, rap rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RFB 
at the uh, crossing on Mass Ave at Forest Street to further improve the pedestrian crossing safety there. Um, and in addition, um, another way we wanted to improve safety here was to uh, reduce the number of vehicle conflicts that are that we do encounter at this intersection. Uh, so one way in which we tried to do that was um, restrict left turns from Appleton Street onto Mass Ave. Uh, we did collect traffic count data at this intersection and we did find that only a handful of cars are making that turning movement during the peak periods. Uh, so we do expect that that left turn restriction would have minimal impacts to uh, traffic operations um, as a result of that left turn restriction. In addition, um, we, did, we are proposing to uh, convert Appleton Place to a one-way traffic flow heading in the southbound direction so that vehicles will only be entering Appleton Place from, this inner, um, from Mass Ave. Vehicles will not be allowed to travel northbound and enter Mass Ave from Appleton Place at this location. So that further reduces uh, a vehicle conflict that could occur in this location. Um, and this was the uh, preferred uh, traffic flow if this was to be converted. Uh, we did discuss whether northbound or southbound would be um, you know, which would be the least impactful for traffic operations and operations of the church here. Um, and the one way southbound um, was uh, recommended to be the, uh, the uh, preferred uh, traffic flow um, in, in these alternatives. Um, so that's option one. And the main difference you'll see between option one and option two is um, the difference from the shared lanes, which we saw in option one, to the implementation of the designated bike lanes in option two. Now, from a bicycle safety uh, perspective, this is viewed as the preferred, um, the preferred option as it provides, the, um, it provides additional safety measures for bicyclists relative to option one. Through the installation of the designated bike lanes, the obvious um, benefit there is that it completely separates bicyclists from the vehicle travel lanes in this section. Um, and you will see that we are. Um, so the main concern with this option here is that in order to fit in the on-street bike lanes, um, we will need some uh, on-street parking um, restrictions to be implemented in order to fit those in within the existing um, pavement widths along Mass Ave as we're not proposing any widening as, um, under these short-term alternatives. Um, so the, the uh, drawback to this option are the on-street parking restrictions. However, we did try to create, you can see if you look a little closely in some of these areas, um, through the use of shifting um, the, the travel lanes and the bike lanes, we did try to minimize the on-street impacts as much as on-street parking impacts as much as we could um, and maintain parking, you know, as much as we, uh, wherever possible, especially in areas where there seemed to be a demand where, you know, certain businesses may not have off-street parking. Um, uh, and there also may be certain businesses or residents or locations where there may be a higher demand due to the surrounding, immediate surrounding um, land uses. So we tried to maintain parking in those areas uh, as much as we could. Um, so in total, you know, if I go back quickly to option one, you can see that the net loss in parking along this section was a total of five parking spaces. This only accounts for on-street parking supply on Mass Ave. Um, so the option one, five spaces lost results in about a 10% reduction in the Mass, street, Mass Ave on-street parking supply. Option two with the implementation of the bike lanes um, it does result in a 22 parking, a loss of 22 parking spaces, which is approximately 42% reduction in the park on street parking supply along Mass Ave. Um, however, as um, the reason for this project was to um, improve safety and the optimal safety improvement that we feel um, is uh, the optimal, the, the option that does provide the optimal safety benefits that we um, presented here is option two with the bike lanes. Um, so through, through the several public meetings with the design review committee and public participation that we had, um, option two was deemed as the recommended option to be installed under these short-term improvements. 
Um, as you can see, um, the bike lanes, you know, obviously improve uh, the safety for bicyclists in this area, but also at the intersection, it's a much higher uh, visibility crossing through the intersection here for the eastbound bicyclists. Um, it should notify drivers um, in uh, even more of this bike bicycles in this area as opposed to option one. Um, the same geometry and short term curb extensions are proposed as I went over in option in option one, those are seen in option two as well. Um, and in order to address the concerns that are known to be had when bike lanes are installed adjacent to on street parking, we are proposing a buffer, a minimum of two feet between that bike lane and the on street parking to minimize and reduce the frequency of potential uh, door crashes where you have people getting in their cars and opening the doors to those cars in, in conflict with the bike lanes. Um, so that buffer should be enough to, um, to handle that, that width, extra width that's seen when the doors open for bicyclists not to be in conflict with those areas. Um, so in, in long story short, um, option, option two was chosen as the recommended alternative to be installed under the um, short-term improvements and this also is in line with the town's transportation plan um, that does uh, recommend to fill the gap in the existing bicycle lane network on Mass Ave, which is in this section here. Um, and as a result, this is consistent with that. And we, uh, it is our engineering opinion that option two provides the most safety benefits here, um, which was the ultimate goal and reason for the project. Um, so now, I think that concludes my spiel of these uh, concepts and I'll open the floor um, back to Adam and any um, comments or questions that people may have. Thank you, Jason. M Madam Chair, do you wanna give the board an opportunity before moving to public comment? Yes, definitely. Um, I'll start with Mr. Herb. And actually, I think I would like to reserve comments until after public comment. Thank you, though. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, just some questions, and then you can give me um, short answers, I mean, as short as you want. Okay, um, so has the MBTA, um, this is to the, the engineer, uh, uh, to you, Ms., um, Madam Chair, uh, has the MBTA agreed to move the stop? Yes, uh, we did coordinate with the MBTA and okay, they great. did approve the new location. Great. Uh, and so how long will, will it take us to get a light there? Um, we, that's a, a loaded question, I guess. Um, there would be some analysis. I mean, it, it depends on funding, right? And what's available for the project. Um, okay. So I, I, I the number of factors that could impact that. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. It, uh, so, so so with respect to the, the um, not so much the research, I mean, I guess the permitting process or whatever, the re pro review process, hey, let's say the funding's there, hey, and how long would it take us to do whatever we need to do to order to get the light? Uh, just strictly from a traffic uh, signal installation at this one intersection, um, I would account for uh, a, maybe a six month construction duration, um, very approximate, um, guess at to this point, but that also, you know, that, that doesn't, we don't know the whole limits of the, um, the uh, construction yet, right? There could be some roadway widening, depending on the design that's needed, um, and the analysis that's performed. So I would say, uh, in short, maybe one construction season would get this uh, project done and constructed. And, and that includes the, the review and everything? So no, that would just strictly be construction, the design would need to be leading up to that. Right, right. And so can you give a sense of how, how long the design would take or maybe, Go ahead. Yeah, maybe six to 12 months. Okay. Depending on the scope. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and, and, um, and so, uh, with respect to the light, the signal, yeah, I know it will depend a, a lot on, on what we want to do there, Abe, but how, what potential effect do you think it would have on option two? having a light there 
So on option two, um, so the one thing that we, basically what, what we'll find, right? The, if a signal is installed, the maximum safety benefit that can be installed here and implemented to um, improve that eastbound with westbound left turn conflict is to completely eliminate it, which would require the installation of a westbound left turn lane. Um, and basically that westbound left turn lane would be need to, would need to operate under protected only where there's no, it, there's no eastbound through movement allowed during that westbound left turn movement, right? Um, so that in order to fit bicycle lanes with that left turn, um, with that westbound left turn, there would need to be some minor widening in that area to accommodate that. Um, okay. So that would need to be something that would need to be worked out in, um, you know, impacts that are associated with it, things like that during design. Gotcha. And, um, and the last um, question involves that um, ATR TMC um, PDF that was sent. Uh, I, mean, I guess maybe I should know this, but, uh, but my curiosity just won't let me go. Uh, uh, so um, let's, the pages aren't numbered, but um, when you um, see, if um, I'm going to start from the top and scroll down one page, two pages to third page. I mean, at the bottom there uh, are a couple of rows a, devoted to AM peak volume, PM peak volume. I'm just not clear on what I'm reading there because I, I, mean, I see like 8 a.m. Um, 14 and then 11 a.m. 3:10, 7 a.m. I'm just not clear on what I'm reading there. So uh, without having it right in front of me, generally. The, the TMCs will, um, the peak hour is, you know, the hour which require, which the intersection experiences, you know, the vol traffic volumes for the intersection as a whole are at their peak or greatest. So you may see, you know, even though it may not be the peak hour for say the eastbound volumes, it, it is the peak hour for the entire intersection as a whole. Um, as far as ATR goes, you know, that, that would be the, the one hour in the morning and the afternoon periods where the, that um, usually if we had an ATR on Mass Ave, say we have eastbound and westbound volume splits. So there'd be um, an AM peak hour um, for eastbound vehicles, eastbound and uh, peak hour for westbound vehicles and then a peak hour for them combined. So, you know, you might see say in the morning peak hour for the intersection as a whole, you might have 400 eastbound vehicles, right? But then say the peak hour was for the intersection as a whole was seven to eight, but you may have 500 vehicles eastbound that occur between eight and nine. But the, the other approaches experience a lesser volume. So it's not the entire peak for the intersection. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. You know, you know what? Me, for, I I didn't get it. Me last night when I was reading it, but for some reason now, when I asked you the question, I started scrolling back up. I now see me what I was missing then and why me the the times me don't seem to line up with what I expected. So it was just um, brain block on my part. So I get it now, and so um, I apologize to everyone for for that question. But hopefully, someone got something out of that. So uh, thank you. I'm all set. Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to follow up with Mr. Diggins' questions about the long range plan. And I think it's really important because uh, my understanding from a lot of folks I've talked to and, and listening to people I think on different, who advocate for both option one and option two, um, is that neither of these short term options are, are going to, to do the lion's share of the, the prevention that we need. Um, to really mitigate the kinds of uh, the, the circumstances that, that caused the serious crashes. Um, but I guess I'll stop there because I'm not an expert and ask um, our experts if that's a fair characterization of you know, what I just said. Yes, while these do um, provide safety benefits, um, it does not completely eliminate. Solar glare is a big issue here and there's nothing that can be done to eliminate the solar glare here, right? The solar glare is still gonna exist under these short-term improvement options. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way to combat the solar glare issue um, is to completely eliminate that conflict between the eastbound vehicles and the westbound left turns, which can only be done under a signalized um, intersection where there's an exclusive left turn lane and it operates under protected only operation. 
Um, so yeah, that is the yeah. you know the maximum safety benefits here. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, so and also to follow up on another another part of that, um, I think that Mr. Diggins you know ascertained that with that long term plan in mind, the the a signalized intersection with with a protected with a left turn dedicated lane and a protected left turn that um, we would have to widen the road to, to keep the bike lane if, if we installed one as part of option two. Um, if, if we didn't install, and I'm not making a comment right now on, on the merits of the plans, but if, if we did option one instead, if we didn't install the bike lane, is would we be looking at when the long-term solution is in place, would we need to lose width somewhere else? And are we looking at a likelihood or, or at least the possibility of needing to lose the park, the curb parking that's there uh, on one side or the other uh, of that street to do that. And I know that I'm not asking you a policy question. That's our, you know, that's our, that's our problem. Um, but I'm asking kind of a practical question. Um, does something have to slim down there? And and uh, and if so, would it be sort of the magnitude of a of that parking lane? Yeah, I think that's something that can only be answered when that when the public, in, it's gonna rely heavily on public engagement and the funding that can come, that the town can come up with for this project, because obviously widening the road is additional, you know, requires additional funding, right? There's more impacts there. Okay. Um, you know, it could, what I will say is that the, the available right of way here, we do have the available public right of way to widen the roads, to install the left turn lane with the bike lane and maintain on street parking. Um, however, you will need to cut into the sidewalk and or the buffer widths that are out there today and or potentially some of the sidewalks. Um, but, you know, that that will depend on public engagement during the process and, you know, what, what we can come up with to kind of offset the parking impacts as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if, if we can do the complete widening that we need, I think it's possible to uh, accommodate the bike lanes, the left turn lanes and the parking. Um, mm -hmm. With the with that widening within the right of way, um, but that could depend on a number of yeah. things. No, that's fair. And and you know, the reason I'm asking these is that I think we have a short term decision, and I think it's really important that we make one so that we can get some paint on the ground this this fall, if at all possible. Um, but we need to. I, I think I suggest that we we do this with a long term view of what we you know ultimately need to do. Uh, we cannot lose sight that these short term fixes, neither of them, get us comfortably close to where we need to be to, to eliminate that fatal conflict. Um, so that's why, I'm, you know, I think helping us think through what we may need to do in the future anyway, with respect to losing some space there, whether that's losing it to sidewalk or losing parking or, or you, know, you know, whatever, I think we, we have to be you know, realistic about that and, and think about that together. Um, my final question is, and I think this, Madam Chair, this might be to the town manager to, to decide, how to route this question. Um, with the long-range solutions that we currently see on the table, that would be the ones that would really eliminate that potential serious conflict. Would that require federal or state DOT funding to do? And if it does, what are the like what is the likelihood that that funding would would then require us to, to install dedicated bike lanes anyway for the long term? Madam Chair, may I? Yes, please. So I will, um, I'll try to answer the first part and then I I think I'll ask either Jason or potentially Mike Rademacher or Dan if they can help me with the second part. Um, the first part being, I do believe that an outside funding source would be necessary um, to be able to implement or at least in a timely fashion given competing demands within our capital budget. The team in the Department of Planning and Community Development are ready to begin a Mass Works grant application, which we think we'd be very competitive for to make the longer term improvements, um, as have been discussed, based on the recently improved MIRAC housing development, as well as the development of the hotel that's been issued a special permit by the Redevelopment Board. Um, Mass Works grants are uh, usually given to applicants that have provided increases in both housing and economic development. So it would meet both of those criteria quite well. Mm -hmm. So we see that as the probably the most likely and quickest funding source that we might be eligible for. Um, 
if that didn't work out, we would then need to seek out whether or not there were some other grant sources or state funding sources we could uh, we could look at. To the point, to the question of whether or not any of those funding sources would require um, the installation of bike lanes for improvements to be made, um, Jason, I don't know if you know offhand the answer to that, um, or and if not, maybe Dan or or Mike could respond. Yeah, um, you know, if it's added, if it's funded through state, say MassDOT adds it to the tip program and it's included and it's funded through that program, they would likely require bike lanes to be installed um, unless very significant justification is provided to not install them. Uh, but they definitely would be looking for those um, for bike lanes here. Thank you. I think, you know, that again, that for me, that speaks to the long term view of, of I know that we haven't defined and let alone paid for the whole project, but these two options are not the whole project. They can't be. We cannot stop here. Um, so I think that whatever we do tonight, I encourage my colleagues in the community to think about the long term picture and to think about how these uh, these short term efforts, which are worth doing and worth doing as soon as we can. Uh, will fit into the long-term what we have so that we do not lose momentum uh, for the long-term changes, but also so that we can make these short-term choices with informed by what we think the long-term solution could look like. So uh, with that, that's, that's all I have. And thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, I'll just be really brief and then I'll outline um, the public participation um, aspect of it. Um, very thankful that the bus stop is going back to where it originally was. Um, it got moved to its current site, um, where it's now going back to its former site within the past 10 years after we went through all these studies and did all these things and it never made any sense. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, I definitely want to uh, hear from the public and then afterwards, um, hear a discussion from the vote and I'll elaborate more there. So what I will do now is um, I will take public um, comment on this. Um, I would just say to everyone, first off, we need your name and address for the record. If you live in Arlington, you don't have to say it. We just put it in as a default. Um, if not, and you're welcome to say if you live in Arlington, Arlington, um, along with your address identification. Um, you can have up until three minutes um, you, that doesn't mean you have to take the whole three minutes. Um, if your point's already been made two, three, four, five times, um, feel free to, you know, um, appear before us um, for public participation. But we also have two other agenda items, which also is a public hearing, which is probably going to have 20 to 30 plus speakers. So, um, and as you get close to three minutes, um, I won't do it right on the dot. If it sounds like you're um, winding up your remarks, if you do go that far into it, I'll try to wait to the next sentence before um, I ask you to uh, move on from there. So I'm assuming some people have been raising their hands Why I um, were giving those remarks about public participation. This is just comments for the board to hear. There's, um, you know, no back and forth or you know, it's just providing us with more information to help guide us for um, any vote we may take tonight. So, Mr. Chapterling, do you have a sense of how many hands are up? So there's 25 hands up right now. And if I could ask Jason to stop his sharing, um, it'll, it'll both be easier for me to manipulate promoting yeah. people and I think easier to see people speak. Thank you, Jason. Um, would you just like me to um, try to think about how to streamline this? as much as possible, Madam Chair, would you be okay if I promoted people in groups of three so that we can keep them rolling um, without having to wait for people to come in? That's fine. And I would say to, um, can we stop the list at 25? Because that's over an hour of comments. Unless, do you see more hands going up? Now it's up to 32. Okay, um, I think um, Attorney Hines, since there are so many, can I um, put a, maybe a two minute time limit on it? So everyone who wants to be heard, not only on this agenda item, but the next one that will probably have the same amount and the one after that. 
Yes, Madam Chair, you can limit the uh, amount of speaking time at your discretion uh, to fit the agenda. Okay, so if there's 30 and we do two minutes, we're still at an hour of comment. So again, um, uh, name and address for the record, uh, including city or town. Um, you don't need to use the full two minutes if your comments have been made many, many times. Um, the board has heard it that many times. So um, I think the town manager is going to promote three at a time. And then if you could start giving me the names. So the first three names are Petru Sofio. Who's up first? Uh, Petru Sofio is first, Thomas Proctor, and Linda Epstein. Okay, let's start in that order then. Hi, I'm Petru Sofio. I live in Arlington at 8 Elmore Street. First, I'd like to thank the town staff and Green International for their dedicated work on this intersection. So I'm an AHS student who bikes to school every day, and I have to use this intersection to get from my house to the bike path. It's really, really scary. I don't feel comfortable riding in the same lane as cars. I'm worried I'll be abused by someone having a bad day. They may try to run me down or shout and gesture at me to move off the road. These aren't even hypotheticals. They've happened to me before, and it's really scary, especially as a minor. I get really shaken up, and it distracts me from my learning environment at school. I've even been hit by a car in the section of Mass Avenue a year ago during my cross-country practice. Just today, I was almost hit by three cars at this intersection while crossing on foot during my hallway walk phase. Other AHS students agreed. Today, I prepared a petition that 133 AHS students who use this intersection every day by bicycle or on foot were demanding bike lanes on this section. I heard stories from people of their close calls and even some of people being hit by cars. It's shameful that this is a common issue. We need infrastructure that protects and separates vulnerable people on the street from speeding cars. And we need to narrow lanes to slow cars and bicyclists down. While reading the letters opposing the bike lane, I was personally hurt. It's really sad that my right to safety makes people angry. Arlington is a bicycle-friendly community. We need to act like one. A bicycle-friendly community does not choose parking over safety for people on the street, especially not of our Arlington students. Please do the right thing and approve bike lane alternative so we can keep students and other vulnerable road users safe on Massachusetts Avenue. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And then thank you for taking that extra effort and um, gathering those signatures for the petition. Okay, next we have Mr. Chaplain. Thomas Proctor. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Thomas Proctor. I live at 431 East 154th Street in the Bronx. Uh, my brother, Charlie, was killed at Mass Ave in Appleton May 5th last year. Uh, my family has experienced an unimaginable loss and an incredible amount of suffering since then. Uh, but through it all, I've been really impressed with the support we've seen from the town, starting from Mrs. Mahan's words of insurance that the town would be working to repair this intersection as quickly as possible during the first select board meeting that took place after his death. Uh, we've been really impressed with the democratic process that the design review committee has gone through and that you as the select board quickly convened. And I hope that you can follow the recommendation that they made for alternative two. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about who my brother was because I don't think that we should lose sight of what a death like this means. Uh, this picture of him taken uh, at our, our wedding five years ago. It's the one with the big smile looking at the camera here. Uh, he was a constant choice of joy, energy. He was always going on incredible adventures. He was an accomplished ice climber, and mountaineer. He was always trying to share his adventures with everybody around us. He was careful and caring during that. He was the one who made sure that I was safe when I was climbing. He was the one who made sure that my parents were eating and drinking enough during our family bike tours. 
And he was the one that told me that I was biking too fast on city streets when I visited him in Massachusetts. Uh, his, his death was not an isolated incident. We've had two people who have nearly died there in the intervening year and a half. And every day that we rely on half measures because proposed an alternative one is another day that that deadly risk remains. It's especially urgent right now. We don't wait months to do a long traffic study, years to install a traffic light. With COVID, we've seen increased levels of speeding and traffic deaths and need to do this now. Understand that the businesses across the street are worried about parking restrictions. Uh, the town needs to get creative to solve these problems. That means reaching out to the church across the street to try to rent portions of the lot during weekdays or mediating some negotiations with the landlords at those businesses to allow customers to, to park in lot, the lots that are behind them. I know, I, I know this is hard work, but uh, letting people die because parking is hard is not the answer. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much. And um, thank you for sharing and, and talking about your brother um, as myself having gone through very, very devastating um, loss and my family take it far too young. Um, but one of the best things for everybody involved, especially yourself and your family is to really talk about your brother, continue to talk about him whenever you get the chance so that as the years go by, you know, that place in your heart doesn't get replenished, but it it gets, you know, easier and easier to remember the memory in such a good way. Um, not that you don't shed a little tear or anything like that, but I know for myself, the first few years, um, I don't think I could have done what you just did um, and gotten the words out. Um, so I, I understand the emotion. So thank you so much. And I did break my two minute rule on that, but that's okay. I can do that in the chair. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Chapterling. Next speaker is Linda Epstein, followed by Phil Goff and then Brian Restusha. Hi, I'm Linda Epstein. I'm a um, Arlington resident. I live in the Heights and uh, I'm a cyclist who commuted through uh, has commuted through the Appleton Mass Ave intersection for over 20 years and had my own uh, close calls uh, at that intersection. And I'm also a friend of the Proctor family. Um, and I wanted to do something um, when I learned of Charlie's death. And when the select board had voted to create the design review committee on June 8th, I was immediately wrote to try and find out how to get onto the committee. <clears throat> um, I've been a little bit frustrated with the process um, in that it took nine months for the committee to be assembled and convened. Um, and also that we, uh, as a committee, didn't have as much input into the um, original design as um, I was, um, I thought we might have at the beginning. There were um, options already uh, drawn up before the committee met. Um, and I can't imagine the frustration that the, um, Proctor family has felt waiting um, for so long for something to uh, be, for the design review uh, committee to be convened. Um, today I returned from uh, vacation and uh, read all the emails going back and forth about uh, the uh, decision to prevent, uh, to present the modified option one to the select board. And that left me a bit um, disappointed and, and deflated. Um, I feel that the time and effort that the committee put into carefully considering the safety of cyclists and pedestrians was once again overruled in favor of the automobile. I use the laundromat at the corner. I know the, um, how difficult it can be to find parking in that um, area, um, but I also, as a cyclist, um, try to be uh, respectful of um, the cyclists and pedestrians that are in that area. Um, I okay. feel that uh, um, you can just one more sentence or yeah, sure. Um, so I would like to say that um, option two uh, is the is the uh, option that the committee um, voted on. 
and okay, that shadows James. are not the answer. Yes, thank you. I, thank I, you. I have to. Yep, that's I've fine. Got 40 speakers, and yep, I, thank I you. have a feeling everyone's going to go two minutes. Um, next, I think, was Phil Goff. Up oh, there. Correct. Yep. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Phil Goff. I live at 94 Grafton Street in Arlington, and I was a member of, like Linda, of the Design Review Committee. So I'd like the board to consider the short-term improvements to the intersection as a three-legged stool. And the proposed you know, low-cost striped bump outs with the flex posts that Jason talked about earlier, aiming to slow the left turning traffic, that's, that's an important improvement to the intersection. Absolutely, we welcome that. But it's really only one third of what is needed. And like any stool, absence of the other legs ends in a failure. The second critical leg is the striped bike lanes that provide dedicated and safe space for cyclists, especially without the need to worry about the doors of parked cars opening suddenly leading to a catastrophic crash. The third leg is the continuous bright green bike lane markings, especially for the people riding downhill. Like those installed in Arlington Center, the green lanes are a 24-7, 365 day reminder to drivers to watch for cyclists when either taking a left turn from Mass Ave to Appleton, but also have Appleton traffic taking a right on Mass Ave. So I can appreciate the desire that some have uh, referred to at looking for some data related to parking demand, but you know I believe it'll do absolutely nothing to change the simple physics of a three-legged stool. The leg, you know, one leg just won't hold it up. We all know that cars park on the south side of Mass Ave between Appleton and Burton on occasion. Utilization lies somewhere between zero and 100% utilization. Based on my observation, I'd say it's probably 25, 30%, but perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe it's 40%, maybe it's 50%. But are we to expect that there is a threshold for which Charlie Proctor's life and others who have been injured no longer matter? It's, this is not a hypothetical argument about head and bike safety. It's actually real. This has all happened. This is a okay, dangerous if you could, if you could Just one more sentence and that's it, because yep. I, I have so many to speak and yep. we're going to so, again, Thank you. I appreciate it. I really highly recommend option two is the way to go. Uh, let's keep that three-legged stool standing. Thank you very much. Um, Brian Strusha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Strusha, I apologize. No worries. So I live in town at number 73 Rhinecliffe Street, and until the pandemic, I work near the intersection. In addition to biking to work and errands, I biked through this intersection for three years of preschool with my youngest daughter. When she gets to middle and high school, she'll be traveling through here on her own, just like her two older sisters do today. For us, the hazards here are not theoretical. Tonight, you've heard from the fatal crash victim's family. Um, you've also heard from in the past his partner, friends, coworkers. You'll hear from a man who was maimed in a crash here after our town's failure to act with urgency back in May of 2020. Countless folks will tell you about crashes and close calls they've witnessed or been a party to at this intersection. You'll hear from parents like me who will tell you how they're worried for their children walking or biking to school here. We'll tell you how it's not fair to force our townspeople, most notably those who aren't able to drive a car because of youth, disability, or poverty, to choose between their personal safety and their right to get around to life's essentials like school, work, church, or errands. You'll also hear from the other side, the folks who will try to convince you that as a town, we need to value the privilege of close and convenient parking over our children's right to travel safely to school and to all of those other things I've talked about. They'll argue that people like me and my children should face a higher risk of injury, the risk of being maimed, crippled, even killed, so car drivers can park a little bit closer to their destination. It's an argument that boils down to, won't somebody please think of the parking spaces? And well, I'm just gonna come out and say it, they can't be serious. And if this committee, if this board votes against option two, you're not serious either. You're not serious about the right of our townspeople to travel safely, not serious about respecting the public process which led to the design review committee's recommendation. You're not serious about our town's complete streets or sustainable transportation plans, not serious about striving for vision zero, not serious about tackling pollution, traffic violence, or climate change. If you vote to delay or to do less, you are not serious about protecting me or my family. And let me be frank, you are not serious about keeping your seat on this board. Please do the right thing and put people before parking. Vote yes on option number two. Thank you very much. Um, I believe next, I, Christopher Casa. I thank you so much to the chair and to the board for uh, such a thoughtful treatment about this and also to the engineers involved. Um, I am at 103 Gore Street in Cambridge, and I've been working as a volunteer to try and work on 
the Cambridge bike lanes, which we actually have a public meeting about tomorrow that will be part of the critical mass have network. So um, this area is a key gap in the critical route of mass have for people who bike and walk. And it's, a, it's just one chunk right now that's missing out of a really long part that's going to be developed by the Cambridge Cycling Safety Ordinance, which will get people who bike all the way to Boston. So you know, it's really critical that we have bike lanes that form a continuous network and uh, make them safe for people of all ages and abilities. So the public meeting about the first stretch that actually abuts uh, Alewife Brook Parkway all the way to the Arlington border on Mass Ave is actually tomorrow night. Um, I just wanted to add uh, one last thing, which is just that this isn't a fluke. This is outdated infrastructure. These are old road designs that we would never make again now. Um, and one death is too many, but watching this repeat itself with two additional serious injuries means we need to take bold action. Parking can't be prioritized over safety on this corridor. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Casa. Um, next, if I read this right. It's Kevin, Kevin, Fall Fall it's Kevin, Kevin Fallon, Fallon, then Bill Coppathorn. Okay, Mr. Fallon. Hi, my name is Kevin Fallon and I live at 8 Newman Way in Arlington. And I'm happy to participate in this discussion. And um, I want to express the support that I have uh, um, more than 200 people from my clinic who have signed a letter of support for our position. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Arlington and I've already sent a detailed letter to members of the select board. Um, I'm a small business working here for more than 27 years in the same location. And we see 60 to 75, sometimes 90 people a day. We are very concerned how the option two will affect my business. I support big time a comprehensive and thorough study of this area that includes all parties affected rather than this piecemeal approach. And um, the safety of my clients and pets is a serious concern. Forcing clients to negotiate with longer walks encountered by carriers and leased pets. Many of our clients are elderly and would greatly be challenged. The proposed option will be devastating to my business. Um, there is no evidence that putting this new bike lane in will increase safety at the intersection. And I disagree with what Jason said. You know, that I, I have been riding on Mass Ave for more than 65 years at this intersection. I grew up on Florence Ave and I've been flying down this road my whole life. There's no way that if you put a bike lane in there, I'm gonna go slower. That, that safety concerns I think are more the left-hand turn on to Appleton and the people who never stop on Appleton Street when they're merging onto Mass Ave. Um, I'm a, a very concerned that option two will affect my business um, to a point where it's gonna be economically unfeasible for me. I'm forcing clients to navigate with longer walks, encumbered by carriers and leash pets. Okay, um, I'm, 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 I know I'm going long. You're repeating now and you're, you're well over yeah. two minutes. So thank you so much. And I, I do appreciate um, everything you do for the town. Thank um, you guys so much. With Ico um, and- I think and I, I, I'm happy to work you. with you guys on yes. fixing it. Okay, I got. I, I probably have forty more people I got to go to, so I have go to move it. on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, next, I believe is Bill Coppathorn. Correct. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Coppathorn. I've been a lifelong resident of Arlington, and I am the owner of the properties um, on Mass Ave, uh, 1189 to 1195 Mass Ave, the building with the awnings, as well as the Leader uh, Leader Bank branch at 12. 1201 Mass Ave. Uh, tonight, I am speaking not only for myself, but for my tenants that rely on this free parking for their customers and clients. And speaking with a few of my tenants, they have indicated the proposed plan, this option two, which eliminates, you know, 22 parking spaces, 42% of the parking between, you know, Forrest and Richardson, um, would, as Kevin had just mentioned, potentially put them out of business or force them to relocate. 
And, you know, the result is that it's going to end up leaving empty storefronts, which is, you know, a better chronic problem in town for a while, especially down in the center. And that's something that no one would like to see, uh, in including the town. I, I fully agree. I, I've been working out of this building for over 40 years now, and I agree that safety measures are necessary at that intersection. I disagree that, you know, you know short term solutions, some of them may help for a short term, but that is it and that we should be you know, looking at longer term solutions. And I think one of the key ingredients to that is having a, you know, a different uh, set of signals there with the dedicated left-hand turn up to Appleton. That's gonna prevent these issues or should help prevent these issues with solar glare, which is one of the main issues there. Um, so, you know, we're, we're all for safety. Everyone, uh, every one of the tenants in these buildings here and you know, I'm not a traffic expert, so I, I would definitely leave that to others to come up with a design, but taking into account not only the bike safety and safety of the children coming and going to Audison, but the needs of those of us that live and work in the area. You know, I respectfully ask that uh, the you know, plan um, option number two uh, be, be voted down and that we continue to work forward on this and work on long-term solutions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Coppathon. I appreciate it. I'm Thank sorry. You. I feel bad cutting people off. Not um, a problem. Think, next, we have um, Scott Mullen, Mr. Mullen. Great. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and for the opportunity to speak to this very important matter. Um, Scott Mullen, 68 Henderson Street, where I live with my uh, partner and our daughter. Uh, seven-year-old bicycle rider who goes to uh, first grade at Thompson now. Very excited about that. We ride even in the rain because we're not we're not made of sugar. We won't melt. Um, for many years, from 1999 to 2003, I worked at the corner of Forest and Mass Ave in a small office at 1173. Uh, I know that intersection well. Fast forward a dozen years, I'm a member of Work Bar and I'm going up to the heights. Sometimes on my bicycle, sometimes in my car, sometimes on the bus. Right? We 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 uh, use the mode that's appropriate for the trip. I agree with the design review committee's recommendation for design two with the bike lanes. I also agree with select member Helmuth that this plan goes nowhere near far enough. This is a starting point, more needs to be done, but this has to be done now. And I urge uh, 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 the select board to vote in favor of option two. Uh, this is uh, an on-ramp and an off-ramp, especially coming westbound. The sweeping turns down Forest and up Appleton and down Lowell, uh, that uh, needs to be calmed. Uh, and uh, um, what I saw in Jason's um, uh, renderings here, most of the, the parking uh, that is being taken away is far away from where the businesses are. It looked to me like it was up um, where the break to Lowell Street is. Um, I was seeing things like from Richardson Street all the way down to Appleton. Uh, everything is retained except for uh, seven or eight spots or something. And on the other side, it might only be two. Keep in mind, these businesses are not high traffic, foot traffic, uh, retail, restaurant stuff, right? Uh, very low traffic. And there's four parking lots behind those buildings. There's 30 spaces back there. So, and there's also spaces on Forest Street. So come on, let's get through this. We got to fix this. We have to make it safer for all road users, motorists, uh, pedestrians, cyclists, and transit riders. Thank you for the opportunity uh, and please support option number two. Thank you very much. Um, next, I believe we have Allison Piasecki. And if I said it wrong, I apologize. No, that's fine. Um, uh, thank you, Mrs. Chairman, members of the board, town manager, and those that have worked at this intersection thus far. My name is Allison Piasecki. Um, I was formerly of Somerville, Mass., and I currently now live in uh, Norwich, Vermont. Um, I was Charlie Proctor's partner and the person that was killed at this intersection on Mass Ave in Appleton, and I was there 15 feet behind him when it happened. Charlie Proctor was the kindest person that I knew, and every day that I spent with him made me feel incredibly lucky, whether we were adventuring in the mountains, or cooking dinner at home, or going for a bike ride, and we were planning for our future. On May 5th, 2020... Wait, can I stop you there? Can you just slow down? If you go over the two minutes, I won't interrupt you. I, I feel like okay. you're rushing. I don't want you to have to do that. I apologize. Sorry. So please, please stop wherever you want to stop. Um, on May 5th, 2020, around 5 p.m., we started our ride up past Mystic Lakes through Bedford and then finally back to Arlington along Mass Ave. We were headed to a local business to pick up takeout as the pandemic treat um, as long as the grocery store had been too long. We were coasting through the busy streets our, as our effort was over as we approached Mass Ave and Appleton intersection. He pedaled ahead. The car came. It was unclear where it was headed. It took up the entirety of our lane heading straight at us. 
He swerved one way and then another in the lane, but he couldn't avoid the car as is blocking our path forward. And he screamed and then the car struck him and then he rolled over the roof, landed in the middle of the street and the car sped up the hill to go towards route two, not realizing what had happened. I dropped my bike and I rushed to his side to hold his hand. On May 5th, Charlie was killed at the intersection of Mass Ave and Appleton. He was on a bright yellow bicycle. He was six foot three. He was wearing a bright blue jersey that matched his eyes and he was obeying all the traffic laws and he wasn't seen. The car was driving too fast to make a judgment if Charlie was there. With option two with the intersection changes, the car would have to have slowed down for more appropriate speed due to the narrow width of the road with the extended bike lanes, giving the driver more time to see Charlie. In addition, the presence of these explicit green painted bike lanes that are only available in option two would have reminded the driver to double and even triple check before entering the intersection. Finally, the acute angle of the modified intersection would further have reduced the driver's speed. By implementing traffic two's common measures to reduce speed of turning vehicles through this intersection of road, most importantly through this, excuse me, through the road and most importantly through this intersection, further tragedies can be avoided making the streets of Arlington safer for all who travel on them. Please vote to implement option two of bike lanes through the intersection of Mass Ave as well for future changes that makes this, make the streets safe for all pedestrians, cyclists, and everyone in Arlington. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, and thank you for somehow getting the strength to um, take the time to share us um, the tragedy that unfolded in front of your eyes. And I'm sure it continues to do so. Um, so I'm definitely, along with my colleagues, sending you a prayers of um, strength and um, consolation. So next, I believe we have Parker Pacquiao. I would say that wrong. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm grateful for the chance to speak. I'm Park uh, Wilde. I live at Amherst Street in Precinct 5. I'm an 18 year Arlington resident. Um, I appreciate the sense of democracy and the diligence with which you're considering all of this, including um, hearing from people who feel adamantly opposed. I have four quick comments. Um, the first is the safety should be the overriding consideration. The second is that I think we can honor the process. You've appointed people to a committee and we have a longstanding um, transportation plan, both of which really essentially favor option two. And I think that we can honor, honor that best by proceeding as quickly as possible. Um, the third is about the parking concerns. I just read all of the comments from the business people with a lot of sympathy. I hope that over time we can come together more even than we have. I feel like the real challenge for business people in Arlington is the car culture that drives people to malls in the suburbs rather than keeping them in town. And I just feel like the pedestrians and cyclists who are loyal supporters to the businesses that are closer by um, may be a point of conversation at some point. And fourth is we all voted together for the declaration of climate emergency. It had unanimous support from this committee and it included a commitment to consider um, whenever there's a judgment between one option that's more favorable to protecting the climate and another that's less that we lean on the side of favoring the one that's more protective. And I think this gives us an opportunity to do something great and upbeat for Arlington during the challenge that we face. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank you so much. Um, did I put my list one side? Next, I think we have Jim Doherty. Mr. Darty, you need to unmute yourself. Um, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I apologize. You're um, thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, members of the board. I'll be very brief. Um, as you know, I'm um, I'm the owner of the um, site where the um, hotel is going, and I have a few comments. First of all, I'd like to say. Um, I've been a biker for many, many years. 
Uh, many of you will remember years ago, there was a bicycle shop, one of the first ever at the corner of Highland Ave and Mass Ave. I was, um, I was a big spender down there uh, as a child. I appreciate the safety and I, I will say, I, um, I was one, unaware of this process taking place um, and just became informed of it less than a month ago when I was um, um, one of the local business owners reached out to me there. So I think as um, the consultant said, public input is key. Two, um, I just wanna say, I don't think there's really any sides on this because I did attend a, met, a meeting in the last couple of weeks with this group and uh, there are about a dozen people there. I didn't hear one of them um, suggest that they didn't have a concern. I think all of them um, understand, witnessed, experienced, and want change up there in a safe manner. Secondly, I'll say I have a, I have a son who um, rode across country a couple of years ago, over 3,000 miles for a charity. Um, my wife and myself were deeply concerned for bike safety, so um, no one more concerned about that than Ian now. Video. Um, sec secondly, um, I will, I will just say that I'm a proponent of option one. I think it's the right thing to do. I, I agree with Mr. Helmuth, um, but, you know, comment that we need to get to the end game quicker. And I would just like to say, and I, I really appreciate how Adam, um, the planning department and other departments always try to find free money um, for the town to do some of these services. And I think we should applaud that. But I think as, again, everyone, on um, collectively interested in this and not sides, um, agree that this needs to get done permanently sooner rather than later. I will say that um, I don't want to tell the town um, how to spend their, their, their money, but I know there's a lot of debate. Okay, Mr. Doherty, I'm going to have to stop you at two and a half minutes now. I'm sorry. Could I give one last sentence and just finish my thought? Can it be your last sentence? It's not repetitive. Go ahead. It's not repetitive. I was about to say that I think we should use part of the $34 million that we just get, got free from the government and get this thing done now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, I think we have Robin Greenleaf. And I apologize to everybody. It's just that um, we still have quite a few people who wanna speak on this and then we're gonna have another 30, 40 on the next two agenda items. So my apologies. Um, Ms. Greenleaf. Thank you. Can you. Identify yourself. Thank you. I'm Robin Greenleaf. I live at Eight Sweetgrass Lane in Wayland, and I'm also CEO of Architectural Engineers, which is the company where Charles Proctor was working at the time that he died in the accident at Mass Ave and Appleton Street. Yesterday, I submitted an email to the Select Board voicing my strong support for Option Two. I voiced my confidence in Green International as your consultant, and I I am strongly in favor of their recommendation, uh, especially after listening to Jason's presentation. While I was writing my email, I realized I've been practicing engineering for 40 years now. And during that time, I've become very familiar with the public process of how engineering design happens and the bumps in the road that can happen along the way. And these kinds of things are never easy. You have the choice of doing the equivalent of deferring this issue for months or years or doing the right thing and choosing option two and moving forward while dealing with the issues which have to be dealt with while you implement this option. Charles was a gifted engineer who had incredible potential and his life was cut short by his accident. I spoke about him in my email to you and I can't underestimate the impact which his death has had on my firm. He was highly respected by his coworkers and his clients we shared many common interests, which I described in my email, and he was just a truly special person, and we deeply miss him. I reviewed the documents that were posted to this meeting, and when I read the Connect Arlington Sustainable Traffic Plan and saw that both correction of this dangerous intersection, along with the upgrade of this last section of Mass Ave to include a full bike lane, are the top listed priorities of the plan, I don't understand why the town isn't following its own plan to correct both this intersection and this section of Mass Ave. I agree with what Mr. Helmuth spoke of a few minutes ago. It's time to move this issue ahead towards what the future will require. And, and my belief is that option two will move this ahead the fastest. Thank I'm you just, so much. Thank you. I'm, I have to keep moving. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. 
Um, did I, I saw Elizabeth Cod Jones, but I don't see her anymore. Is she still on there? She's on the list, but the next two uh, speakers were Carol McDonald and Steve Moore. Okay, yeah. Um, Carol McDonald? Hi, I'm Carol McDonald. I live at the corner at Appleton Place in Mass Ave for the last for 67 years, my entire life. I have witnessed many accidents at that exercise before the two that happened last year. When Charlie Proctor got hit, the minute I heard the impact, I could not look out my living room windows because the glare was so great. We had to go outside to see what happened and see if they, we needed to call 911. So I know it's a tragedy, but so are so many of the other accidents that have happened in that intersection. I wrote my concerns to the board and to the town manager, the flaws I saw on the options one and two. The one thing I meant to mention on option one, if you move that bus stop, to that other spot, those kids going from junior high will start crossing the street there and not going back to the, the, the traffic lights, causing more issues for the traffic guards. The mark that was done this summer was during COVID. There was less traffic. It should have been also done when the, the parents drive the kids to junior high because that's when the most traffic occurs at that intersection. And as you saw from the letter I wrote to you, you can see all the other concerns I had about that intersection. Thank you. That's enough. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Next, I have Steve Moore. Uh, yes, Steve Moore, uh, Piedmont Street. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, in listening to the, the various comments that I've heard in the public forum, um, I just want to suggest I, very, there's very strong passion, and there's a certainly very strong emotion. I want to, I want to counsel compromise. There is no solution that's going to address some of the, um, some of the stronger comments that I've heard during the public forum. The solution that we're crafting here clearly has involved a lot of compromise, and I think that needs to be acceptable in the end to all parties. Um, and second, lastly, uh, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, ask a question through you. Are any of the sidewalks uh, planning to be uh, adjusted as part of this plan? Um, can someone provide a brief answer on that? that that's usually not what we do, Mr. Moore. Um, as, well, someone... as part of options one or two, there's no curb, curb line or sidewalk adjustment. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank you. I apologize. Um, next, I believe I had Chad Gibson. Hi, right, thank you. I just wanted to speak briefly on some of the comments that were brought up by Jason around the funding mechanisms that will have to be in place for future development here, right? The state has done a lot of work in this area of providing guidance around what is appropriate for bicycle accommodation. And it's very clear, and I think Jason said it very well, that this is not a type of project that's gonna get funded with share rows on a, on a major roadway like this. We need to start working in advance of this. We need to be working towards option two with the expectation that that design will have to carry forward into future development because if the state will just not fund uh, this. We've had the same discussion in Mass Avenue, East Arlington. We knew the state wouldn't fund Sharrows there, right? This is just the same thing over. It's extremely important that we get this going. And I, I urge you to vote for option two. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I have Adam Oster. Thank you, Madam Chair and the uh, members of the board. Um, this is an intersection in which people are suffering injury and death. The town was correct to give to the design committee a safety mandate. Um, the interim solution has to respond to this uh, issue for probably five years. Um, and I don't know that option two is adequate, but I know that option one is not. So I hope that option one is not selected, uh, but if it is, the town should continue to prohibit the left turn onto Appleton during the solar glare periods, which is, I think is still ongoing. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Mr. Oster. Um, next, I have Luke Osborne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Luke Osborne from 11 Bow Street. Um, this intersection is part of my commute every day. Now it's it's twice a day with work from home, dropping my daughter off to preschool. Um, 
I, it broke my heart to see the, the ghost bike show up on this intersection. I fully support option two. I'll keep it short. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and I don't know if you can do this, um, Mr. Chapdelaine, but we're, the numbers keep going up and down with the hands raised. Can we freeze it now with these final 11? Because I, the, the, I can't toggle freezing it. Um, Okay. I, I, I haven't seen the last. All right. Well, I'm just going to take the next 11. I'm, I'm going to take the next 11 that come up. And then that's because we still have two more one hour meetings ahead of us. So um, next I have Roderick Holland. Uh, th thank you. Uh, Roderick Holland, 88 Grafton Street. Uh, saving parking spaces has value. It would be better not to have to reckon that value in terms of the statistical expectation of further deaths and injuries resulting from failing to mitigate the risks of this hazardous intersection. Um, the price of parking shouldn't be paid with lives. I believe op alternative two avoids that and deserves your support. And I think that alternative two has an overlooked advantage in that it, it mitigates reputational loss for the town and for the town's government. That's ongoing now. You've heard it in some of the, the comments uh, tonight. And the next time somebody gets killed at this intersection, uh, man, it will be a mess. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next, I have number two of the 11, Eli Gerzon. Gerzon, I apologize. That was fine, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'll be very brief. Just uh, I run my landscaping business on my bicycle. I go through this intersection uh, several times a week and um, I've been doing so for decades. And uh, option two is, is the least we can do uh, to have protection for cyclists. And studies show that when you slow things down, it helps businesses. It's good to have people walking around comfortable uh, going in and out of business. So uh, I think it's also good for business, but for the love of God, um, let's do what helps people be safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next, I have Leonard Greenberg, please. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, okay. That's okay. Uh, on, on June 14th- uh, I'm sorry, name and address for the record. I'm sorry, Leonard Greenberg. I'm at 106 Wildwood, have been here for over 30 years. And my wife is here hoping to speak, but maybe not. Uh, uh, on June 14th of 2000, I was going through that intersection- 2020. 2020. Uh, and a car did not stop. Uh, I have had, since that day, I've had four surgeries. I'm still going to physical therapy three times a week. Uh, I'm here because if I didn't speak, I would feel bad about whatever happens next in that intersection. Uh, I think that doing anything less than what we can right now puts that you know, people in huge jeopardy under the, under those circumstances. If I could defer the rest of my time to Lynn Stachinsky. Yeah, I just want to say that we are careful riders. We rode into that intersection knowing what had happened five weeks before and exactly the same thing happened again. The visibility when you're coming down Mass Ave from Lexington, whether you're walking or whether you're riding, just no way to be careful enough, even if you know all the problems. And I just want to say also that this, to this past weekend, I drove through that intersection, walked through it twice. Both times I watched cars go around the markers and around the left turn sign, not stop and zoom up on Appleton twice and two for two in terms of that intersection. There was no police mm. car this weekend, but both, both times I went through that intersection, cars zoomed around beyond, around the left, no left turn sign and zoomed up Appleton. Clearly what we've got right now isn't working. Thank you very much. Um, we support have, option two. Yeah, okay. Um, next I have Elizabeth Carr Jones. Hi, 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Carr Jones. I live on um, one Lehigh Street and I'm a former member of the TAC and current member of town meeting. Um, thank you so much for having this hearing tonight. Um, one thing I can say from my experience on the TAC and on town meeting is that, you know, these things really matter. Um, I think it's very good that the town has, has um, decided to move forward with changes to the intersection, that you set up a subcommittee, that you've um, you know, committed to doing short-term and long-term solutions because that's always the best way to do things like this. It's complicated. Um, I, I really look forward to the full solution that, that will um, include bike lanes that will include a signal that will be safe and um, clear for everyone who's going to be using it. Um, and I, I'm very hesitant to ask this question, but I feel like I need to do it. Um, for the members on the, on the committee that worked on this, was it ever considered to include a bike lane on only one side? I know that's considered to be, you know, generally oh, look, yeah. very odd. No, yeah. But no, no, um, I'm, I'm just not going to allow that because that's going to take a long, long time. Just whatever public comments you want to give the select board. So, God help us, please. We can get to a vote and we have two more one hour plus agenda items. So, okay. Um, the, if you could the, finish. The only reason that I bring this up is that, is that I remember the Mass Ave Corridor project people said, oh, there's no way you can have three lanes on Mass Ave. That's just not gonna work. And then it went in and it worked. So, um, you know, I okay, just well, wondered if, if that okay, might yeah. be helpful. So thank you. Again, thank you again. Thank you. If someone on the committee, um, you can contact the select board's office, get Elizabeth Todd Jones email um, and provide her with that answer um, when you have an opportunity. Next I have, Mustafa Veroglu, and I apologize if I didn't say your name correctly. That's okay. Um, I'm Mustafa Veroglu. I live on uh, 26 Shawnee Road. Um, I bike up and down Mass Ave. Um, I guess not, that's not my regular commute, but I certainly go through there often enough. Um, the descent with the sun behind you is terrifying. Um, coming, coming east. So I think the, the new thing that I want to raise, or maybe not so new, is every single business on that uh, north side of the block has parking lots behind them, the parking lots that are the uh, parking spots we're talking about um, are essentially a public good that we get to decide how we use as a town, whether we use them to store cars for a private business or whether we, you know, allocate the space for safe transportation for the members of the community going through there. So when you look at that, I don't understand, I don't know what the status of those parking lots are. I understood the landlord has spoken on this, this meeting today um, with the number of parking spaces behind those businesses. And um, perhaps the town can work with them to understand you know, how much of that can be used. Maybe some signage can be put up to direct the public into those parking spaces behind the businesses. It doesn't seem like um, we're in a situation where there's, you know, it's a zero sum game. There, are, there is some capacity to expand the pie in a sense. There are other parking spaces available. So I, I, I just really want to, that's the real point I think that hasn't been raised tonight. Um, I didn't say it at the beginning, I did mean to, I, I very much favor option two as a stop gap to putting in a permanent solution. Um, I used to bike commute when I didn't um, work from home and I either have a near miss or I hit the ground or I swerve and slide out. I figure about every nine months and it's just part of the deal. And I'm pretty sick of um, doing it. And this Sunday in a different part of town, I had somebody pull right ahead of me as I was coming down a hill. I've got a headlight on, it's flashing. I'm, you know, well visible. Don't have the sun behind me. Cars are doing all kinds of stupid things. Okay, so thank you so much. Right. I, I, we right, have to keep, get the we have off to too, six please. people who are waiting for agenda items after this. So please, if you could keep that in mind. Um, next I have Karen Jura. I apologize if I didn't pronounce that right. No, you did. Good job. Um, hi, I'm Karen Turer. I live at 525 Summer Street. I'm a cyclist. Most people say I live on my bike. 
I'm a parent, former Mass Bike board member, uh, 2003 to 2007. I speak in support of option two. Um, I have a fifth grader right now. He'll be headed to Addison in two years. Even though he has been biking since he is five, I am terrified, absolutely terrified about that intersection. It is the least safe place in town. And the idea of having him cross it twice a day and all the other kids cross it twice a day with just the option one is just not fair to the well being of our kids. And all it does is put more people like me in cars because I don't think it's safe for a child to walk through there. Um, and with the MBTA buses, I don't know if people saw today, there's a lot of issues about the 77 taking 47 minutes. Um, so there's going to be a lot more kids and teenagers on the roads trying to get to school because the bus isn't serving them and they're not old enough to drive. Do you want that on your heads? I wouldn't. Um, so I do want to confirm that even no matter what happens, uh, we don't rest on our laurels. Given where I live, I actually use the car more in that intersection than the bike. Um, and I have to say, once an option is chosen, um, the issues that killed Charlie Proctor won't fully be erased until there's actually a light with a left turn at that intersection. That's the only thing that will truly get us on the right path. But option two is the best option in the meantime. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Next, I have Sandra Voss. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair and the members of the board. And thank you so much for giving us all the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm Sandra Voss. I live in New York and I'm the sister-in-law of Charlie Proctor, married to his brother, Tom Proctor. And I wanted to talk a little bit about a way in which Alternative 2 uniquely addresses vehicle speeds. So the designated bike lanes in Alternative 2 narrow the car lanes to 11 feet wide, whereas in Alternative 1, the car lanes are 15 feet wide. And research has repeatedly shown that the narrower that narrower car lanes lead to slower driving speeds. In addition, the bike lane is five feet wide and curving, which will also slow down cyclists. If alternative one is implemented with its 15 foot wide shared lanes, speeding will be an issue both for bicyclists and for motorists. We know from the research that when a person is hit by a car going 30 miles per hour, five in 10 pedestrians will be killed. At 25 miles per hour, that number is reduced to 12%, and at 20 miles per hour, only 7% of pedestrians hit will be killed. Designated bike lanes therefore not only protect cyclists, but also reduce speeds of both drivers and cyclists. A striped bump out without designated bike lanes simply does not reach the level of safety necessary for Mass Ave. I therefore urge you to vote for alternative two in the redesign of this intersection. Thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with us. It's <laughs> waiting so long. Next, I have Abby Holt. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm a teacher at OMS, uh, which I think a number of people here know that. Uh, it's nice to see your faces. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that I see students riding to school every day um, before, the, before and after the crossing guard uh, is there, um, and certainly outside of the crossing guard's uh, space. Um, middle school students are bad cyclists. They don't know how to do it. They're nervous, they're inexperienced, or they're just silly sometimes and they're being kids. They need the extra space and the designated space of a bike lane. That is what keeps them safe. And we're seeing more and more bikes there. Uh, the bike racks are overflowing. There are bikes just lying in the grass now um, because of COVID, because of the bus situation. Um, so I just wanna please ask you to vote for uh, option two um, and say thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for everything you do. Uh, middle school kids, I used to I used to coach them in that. That's a very limited role. You, God bless you all day. <laughs> yeah, I love those kids. Say hi to Jake. Exactly. Uh, Kevin Lamb. Mm -hmm. Hello, good, uh, good evening. Thank you for staying up late uh, for everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the, uh, directly to the select board. And my name is Kelvin Lamb. I'm a Chris. Uh, 1188 Mass Avenue. Uh, my wife, Pat, and I have been small business owners and residents of Arlington, Mass for over 20 years. Like many of you, we have seen many tragic traffic accidents near our neighborhood. I believe due to the design issue that we you know, elegantly discuss, and also generally speaking, speeding issue that Jason has mentioned as well. It is 
really a common sense that high speed in general causes traffic accidents. Option two is designed to create separate bicycle and driver lanes. And this design would encourage both motorists and bikers to pick up their speed in their own lanes. Therefore, it is conceivable that option two may cause more accidents. Our goal is to maintain a slow traffic flow for both bicyclists and drivers. An unintended outcome of option two, which most people uh, trivialize it, is the business and residents will lose parking space that you know people keep mentioning about it. However, part, uh, option two will have a negative impact and will create uh, economic hardship for all businesses. On the other hand, option one is a win-win option for bicyclists, drivers, businesses, and residents. And all small business owners rely on street parking spaces for their own customer, like Kevin uh, Fallen had mentioned. Uh, without st uh, st street parking spaces, there will be, again, economic hardship. Uh, which is not a trivial matter for most people. And we all know that 18 months of negative impact of COVID-19 on small businesses, uh, let's not add to that burden with option two. Uh, if a business is unsustainable like us, we'll simply move to a different town. Uh, it okay, is thank, thank you very much. I, I have to get through this and we have two more agenda items that it's going no to- No problem. Thank you for the thank consideration. Thank you very much. And I, Next, uh, thank you, that's good, we're good. Next I have Leah. Grodstein. Hi, sorry, I just messed up. There we go. Hello, I'm Leah Grodstein. Uh, I currently live at 30 Revere Beach Parkway in Medford, but I grew up in Arlington and my parents still live there. My dad uh, does a bike commute to work. Um, I just wanted to add to the voices supporting option two in the short term, uh, mostly for the reasons that have been said already. I'm a traffic engineer and I was taught in my college classes that sharrows are not a legitimate bike accommodation, not at least for all bikers from eight years old to 80 years old. Sharrows are a town admitting that they have given up and that they won't make the difficult choices that give safe space to bikes. Uh, please do not give up in Arlington, especially near the middle school. That's it for me, thank you. Thank you. And I'm gonna say, cause the list keeps going up and down. Um, uh, the list, the list, the list. Uh, I think we can say it's done now. There's two more names. Um, one, one more name, Amanda. It was uh, Amanda N and Judith Proctor. All right, no more after that because when I said 11, five more people, four more people came on. I've been keeping track. So that's it. The list is closed <laughs> after um, Amanda and Judith Proctor. I can only see Amanda N. So you're next. Can you unmute yourself? Hello? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. All right, because we have a full I, I, agenda. I, I, We're not even close. Go ahead. Yeah, my name's Debbie Nowell. I'm on a uh, using a borrowed laptop, so I apologize for uh, the confusion. Uh, <laughs> as a business owner up here at 1180, uh, 1193 Mass Ave, I've been in town. Um, I've had my law firm in town for over 15 years now. And um, I just wanted to weigh in. I, there's a lot of people that have have seemed to indicate that um, it, those of us in, in favor of uh, parking are really, uh, you know, not concerned or considering um, the, you know, the well-being of bikers. And I think, like Kelvin just mentioned, um, there is there can be a compromise that accomplishes both. Um, these are this is our livelihood, and I think Kevin said it well. And 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 Bill mentioned it. We can't function in these in our businesses without without on street parking. Uh, there is no parking in the back. The the few spaces go to the people that are working in the buildings. So uh, and that is a problem in the town in general. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And our last speaker is Judith Proctor. Hi. Yes, I'm Judith Proctor mother of Charlie Proctor. And first of all, just want to thank you, Select Board, um, for all your condolences and sympathies. Our family has so appreciated your caring, um, as well as your commitment to tra traffic safety for this dangerous intersection. Charlie really loved to bike. 
He rode four miles daily from his home in East Somerville down Broadway over North Washington Bridge to his work on Franklin Street, even on rainy, snowy days. He rode to get groceries, to visit friends, and just for fun. As Allison said, they were riding simply to get Thai takeout when the fatal crash occurred. They had planned to ride across the country. We knew he loved his work, his communities, his wide group of friends, us and Allison. Now we know how much they loved him. He often said that his biking meant one, one less polluting car on the road and one less parking space needed. We therefore, my husband and I, strongly urge you to vote and support for option two. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And again, our, our heartfelt condolences. And I, I pray you have the strength you obviously have to continue and go on and also share all the good memories. And as the years go by, the smile will get bigger and bigger. It'll be the same memory, but I think um, God bless you all. Okay. okay. Thank you. With that, um, we now will go back to the board. Um, when we, the manager spoke about this in the beginning, um, I probably shouldn't say my remarks first because I'm sharing this meeting. Sorry. Um, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you to all who presented, all the speakers, the town workers that worked on this, to the consultants. And I want to especially thank and again extend our condolences to all the members of the Proctor family and those who knew Charlie Proctor, who with his fatal accident, accident is a reason that we really are here today to it spurred us to take action to you know, right a wrong and identify safety issues that are in, at this intersection that need to be addressed. I like speaking between the two plans that are before us. I think all of my colleagues that have spoken previously, many of the speakers on the list and during public comment and the consultant have all is mentioned this already, but seeing what we could come up with for safety improvements, there are definitely immense safety improvements that have been presented to us, but it is clear as day that this intersection needs to be signalized. That's the only way to fully make this a safe intersection and prevent further injuries. Between these two plans, I think you know, we've seen the majority of the of the accidents have been relative to the left turn lane and cyclists coming down eastbound down Mass Ave, both in some instance with the bump out, with the restriction on Appleton Place address the, that issue. I do have practical concerns on option two in for two reasons, a, a practical reason and a major safety reason to me. These accidents that are occurring from left-hand turns there are occurring because of the, the speed of traffic, the design of the intersection where, where the cars can take a left turn, and the visibility of cyclists coming down Mass Ave. Until we can get that actual light or that long-term solution, I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure we can slow down everybody that go, comes into this intersection. It's sort of like Downing Square where everyone slows down and control chaos sort of creates safety improvements. For this, I, we, we both plans have the bump out. They have restrictions on turning left onto Mass Ave, the restrictions on Appleton Place, which I think go a long way in creating safety concerns and slowing down the, the automobiles. I do still have concerns. I'm a cyclist. I not not as much as maybe some other individuals that have been spoken today, but I have an office in Arlington Center and at least once a week on in good weather, I like to cycle to my office. I go through this intersection. I too have concerns. We've dealt with this many, many times. We've heard this issue over and over again, and we know this, that there's safety concerns at this intersection. So I, as a cyclist coming down Mass Ave, make sure that I go very slow into this intersection. And I think it's incumbent upon both auto motorists 
and cyclists to make sure that we're all slowing down in the interim until we can get this permanent solution. And for me, the landing zone, it, it all comes down to the Appleton in place area. Whereas I think the dedicated psych, bike lane there, to, and I'm not, I'm not an expert, but I think Dr. Fallon touched on this, might increase the cycling speed coming into the intersection going eastbound on Mass Ave because you have a place to go to. And I th that's something that will eventually be taken care of when, when um, we fully signalize it. But I do have a, sa a legitimate safety concern that in instances where we have sun glare, where we still have people taking the left turn, albeit at a more a safer angle, if we aren't able to somehow slow down cyclists coming down Mass Ave, in the short term, we're still going to have instances of accidents that occur at that, that intersection. There's also the practical matter, and we've heard from a number of businesses, and we are on the back end of a pandemic where businesses have, have suffered. I think it, one gentleman mentioned the businesses that were on that stretch of property as not being high traffic businesses, but I mean, I would have to respectfully disagree with that. There's a law office with a lot of turnover. There's a veterinarian, there's cleaners, there's multiple restaurants. We just licensed another restaurant. So there is a lot of foot traffic there. And that is a practical concern that we have to weigh. Safety is paramount. And anyone who has said that if we pick one option over another, we're not, we're not taking cyclists, pedestrians, automobile, we're not taking safety into concern. I think it's just, it's disheartening to hear that. And we have seen comments like that. We, members of this board and people who follow this board know that say our safe the safety has always been paramount for us in this intersection. We just have to weigh a number of factors and we have to look at the actual changes and we have to look at the safety improvements versus the impact on residents and businesses. And we also, this one plan versus another, it seems to me that we could fuse parts of both plans to create a super plan or a better plan. Whereas we could still have the bike lanes coming on the west western side of the intersection, have the green paint, we just address the area between Appleton Place and Burton Street. And I think that that would have, those are the most impactful spaces on the businesses that are in that area, but it's also the, it addresses my concern about the speed of the cyclists coming down from going east down Mass Ave. And I think that that is a legitimate concern. And I think that's something that we can address. But I, I do think that the town manager's suggestion that we immediately, that there's parts of option one that immediately create safety benefits. And I think it's really important to get that out immediately, right away. And I think we can do that by looking at option one. With the parking site that's been suggested, I know sometimes when people think parking studies and whatnot, we hire somebody, we go out to bid, it takes months. We, I've spoken to the town manager, he can certainly elaborate on this, but the plan would be to have the parking study in, in house. The, plan, the expectation is that it could be completed in October, by the end of October. Mr. Town Manager, if you want to confirm if that's if I'm giving correct information, briefly, if you can. Yes, that's my understanding. And, and Dan Amstens, if you can also nod in agreement that you, you would conduct the study in October and have the analysis shortly thereafter, right? So correct. And that would put us with a vote based on the information, probably sometime in November, we can come back and we can identify areas and it will give us some time to absorb some of the information and maybe identify a fused part of the plan that we can because this board can take action anytime it's not we take action tonight and we can never revisit an issue 
So we, we can certainly, after a parking study, look at that. But again, safety is paramount. The only true way to make this up intersection safe is, it seems to be, everyone agrees on, is to put a signal there, have permanent turn restrictions and whatnot. With both of these plans, I think we're still gonna, I wasn't sure if it was in either of the plans, but I would think the police department is still gonna have to make sure they go out there at night during the low visibility times of the day and put the turn restriction in, which is fine. I think that's worked very well as a short-term short solution. I, I, I too have seen people go through the left turn lane. So that's an issue that we would have to put our heads around to try to figure out how we can make that so put a, bar a sufficient barrier that nobody can get through the left turn lane. But, and that will it, make dramatic improvements while we look at the two plans and try to figure out what we can do for a long-term, short-term plan till we can eventually put the signal at the intersection. And I just, again, want to just briefly comment on the process and some of the commentary that we've received it's just disingenuous to me to have someone tell me that it's this one way of the highway approach that we can't come together and put our heads together and look look at the different interests and make safety paramount and figure out a plan that addresses the safety issues to the best of the ability to the best of the tools that we have in our toolbox right now and addresses concerns of businesses, residents, and pedestrians and school children, and all the people that use this intersection. So my motion would be to adopt option one, direct the town manager to conduct the parking study as suggested. And at the conclusion, once we have the information from the parking study, I think we can re look at both of the options again and take a second vote to see if option two, in fact, is the better option. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, next, I'll go to Mr. Diggins. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I will second it for discussion, you know, and what I really would like me to understand, though, is that, and I guess this is up to us to discuss me maybe after the vote it's just that if if we don't get number one that we then try to have a vote for number two because i'm not an all or nothing person either and if you hadn't made the motion i was gonna make the motion for option two with a default to number one so that we just don't come out of this meeting having done nothing you know so so like i said i'm supporting it for for discussion here are my points, but first I'd like to express my appreciation to Mr. Amstutz for an excellent and um, um, report. It, uh, it, it was it, it was very thorough, very good, and it is what made the decision for me early to support option two because it, you you describe you def, well you don't describe you you make a very good argument me, for why Cheryl's me are not effective in, um, and and in general, not a good idea. Uh, and I'm just trying to be conservative in my use of language because I don't want to load things up uh, 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 in, in, in terms of emotion. Uh, and, and so, so I mean, showers aren't good. And, 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 and I guess I'm going to back up a little bit because I mean, there is solving for the, the left turn, uh, which has led to the deaths and injury or death and injuries. Okay? But also what this design review committee was was tasked with doing was making that whole area safer. And, and so the, the, we want to make cyclists cycling safer for everyone being on both sides of the street. And that's why I support having bike lanes on both sides of the street. Now, granted, me folks may go faster on bikes me, with a bike lane, me, but if the cars are going slower when they make that left turn, me, that's going to reduce the injury um, rate mean and as one person pointed out, and I think there's good evidence to prove uh, to to um, to back it up that you'll make things safer for pedestrians. But also, if you slow things cars down on 
going going towards the heights, the, that will make things safer. But once again, uh, you have the bike lane there, so that makes things uh, safer for the the cyclists too. So that's why I'm a very strong supporter uh, option too. And and also, I mean, it, it just does, it comes down to a matter of conscience for me. And I just want to make it really clear: it's a matter of conscience for me. It says absolutely nothing I mean about me, my respect for um, for your your differences um, with respect to my conscience, me. Uh, and so, so I, I, I feel that everyone here me, values safety in life me, and, and that you may disagree with my decision, but your values are um, along those lines or as strong as mine. Me, but I will just sleep better uh, having done all I can me, for, for option two. Me, and so that's the, that's the emotional element of it for me. And um, on a more. Um, um, okay, so let me just make sure I'm clear. You're making a motion to support option two. Oh, I, I didn't think I could make that motion. I, what I was doing was I was seconding, you know, uh, uh, um, to her. I, th I think you can. Let me check with Attorney Hine. Um, you seconded Mr. Hurd for discussion. Right. Um, and, and we can, if I'm correct, you can do that and then we can take a vote, but just know if we come out with two, two on each option, nothing's going to happen. But attorney Hine. I just think practically given the time constraints here, that that's correct. I mean, I think there's probably a parliamentary way to do it differently, but I think we can, you know, if Mr. Diggins wants, he can make a motion to say that he'd like to alternatively explore uh, supporting option two. All right. Hey. Well, I'll do that because, as I said, and I don't want. I, I'm sorry, Miss Madam Chair. I, I, I'm, okay, I but you, you know, we're not even going to. Okay, <laughs> you want finish up? I apologize. No, no, you, you, you please finish because I think you might give some guidance as to what might be the best way to move forward. Well, first, I need a, a second to Mr. Diggins' motion. Uh, I'm sorry, Attorney High. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I think you were going to go exactly where I would suggest is that if there's there either is or isn't a second for Mr. Diggins motion. And if there is, then I think that there's something for the board to continue to debate. And if there's not, then clearly the board is going in a different direction than, than option two. Right. Okay. And, okay. So, so if I am. So let me um, first, first, second, second to your motion. If anyone, um, I'll second I can't it second for it. discussion. Um, I would go for it. Second in line. Okay. And, and just to be clear what my so motion is though. Just to be clear, my motion is my motion is for option two uh, with a uh, default to one because I don't want us coming out of this meeting having done nothing. So I don't want us to get two on Mr. Hurd's um, motion, two on my motion, and then we come out saying neither of these pass and we're not getting anything done if my motion does is only for option two. So I do want to default to some action. No, no, Madam fine. Chair, can I, can I um, make Mr. a suggestion? Hirsch? Okay. <laughs> um, whether it just be by way of order of voting or if Attorney Heim thinks I should withdraw my motion, but based on the way we're going, where I think everyone at least wants to pass option one, if option two doesn't pass, does it make sense to just take Mr. Dickens's vote first? Attorney Heim? Does that make sense? Or do I have to withdraw my motion in order to do that? That's what I was planning on doing. I was I was going to take them as they came in. And I'm just hoping I can get through this and maybe give Steve four minutes left for the rest of the agenda. So, Madam Chair? Uh, Mr. Helmuth, I apologize. Yeah, yeah well, I have, well, I have an opportunity to, to express my uh, views before we vote. OK. Um, I guess what I'll do is I I will take a vote on the first motion made by Mr. Hurd, um, seconded by Mr. Diggins for discussion. Madam, to, Chair. Um, Madam Chair, can Mr. I? Mr. Hurd. Sorry, can I withdraw the motion? I think procedurally it makes more sense to take Mr. Diggins' motion first. You want to take his first? Okay. All right. Um, on a motion uh, to adopt. Madam Chair, I, I think Mr. Helmuth would like to speak as well. I think he just said he said his stuff at the beginning. Mr. Helmut, do you have more to add? Yeah, my understanding was that the first period was for questions, and I have not had an opportunity to oh, express my views and my intentions. 
Yep, definitely. So, yeah, I'd like the same opportunity as the other members if, if, that, if that pleases the chair. So yeah, I think the first thing I want to say to everybody is, th is thank you for the input. Uh, Arlington has made significant strides to make Arlington, to make the town a friendly and a safe place to get around by bicycle. And we will be a bike friendly town, no matter which decision the board makes tonight. It has sometimes taken us a long time to get to consensus. Uh, the Lake Street crossing comes to mind, the Mass Ave bike lanes, but we have gotten it done and it's been successful. I do not agree that if my colleagues tonight are not ready in this moment to support a specific plan, such as option two, um, that they don't care about saving lives. That is not fair. It ignores my colleagues work. It ignores the work of our town manager over the years um, to promote bicycle access and bike safety. But I do believe that option two provides significantly more than option one does in the here and now uh, to address safety and some of the conditions that have caused the serious crashes at this intersection, even though neither option is the perfect solution, neither option will prevent uh, future serious crashes and, and fatalities necessarily. Um, but I believe it will do more for the reasons that we've heard tonight, slowing the cars down, increasing the visibility of that painted bike crossing in the conflict zone and more. It is true, and I, and I led with this, that you know, neither plan strongly solves the problem or completely solves the problem. Uh, but I don't believe that's a reason to choose uh, the poorer plan when to me and, and the considerable work I've done and, and research I've done and listening I've done over the last two weeks suggests that we have one option that does do more in the here and now for the next three to five years until we have a long-term solution on which we all agree in principle. Um, and so I do, if it hasn't been done, I do second Mr. Diggins motion. And I think uh, I would very much uh, like that to default so that we do get something done tonight. So if, if our motion, second motion, if, sorry, if option two doesn't succeed, uh, I will support a, a motion for option two and in, in Mr. Hurd's original um, motion. Um, the final thing I wanna say is that this summer, all of us, strongly and sincerely endorsed the Sustainable Transportation Plan in Act Arlington. And that plan exactly envisions making difficult choices in places very much like and names this intersection. It envisions making choices that prioritize safe bicycle access um, and, and bicycle safety as a mode of transportation. It is easy to endorse documents and it is much harder to make difficult decisions in a moment that have a cost. And I recognize that. Um, but I also believe that we look to the future. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied that our future options for long-term plans have a strong likelihood of requiring us to do bike lanes anyway. I don't know that for sure, but that is the direction that we have committed Arlington as a board to endorse and in town meeting to start to endorse and support sustainable transportation strategies. I want to look forward. And I think this is one place where we have an opportunity to do that. One last thing. We have made, Arlington has already made all the easy choices for bike lanes on Mass Ave. And I commend the town manager and the board and the select board for doing that and all our staff. All that's left are the really difficult places. And this is one of them. It's not the only one. I took a ride down uh, Mass Ave this weekend. You know, we have some other tough choices in the years ahead that may, choose, may require making choices between sidewalks and street parking and how many traffic lanes and bikes. And we need to address that. But I would say this, this is one of those hard choices that has a bloody history behind it. It has a place where there is uh, a, a long history of crashes and collisions and we'll probably have more until we're able to afford the long-term fix. And speaking for my conviction, and I, and, and I believe that everybody in this board, however we vote tonight, uh, values human life and values bicycle safety. A difference of priority and, 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 and position is, 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 is just that. But speaking from my moral center, I, I believe that option two is the best choice for us tonight. And I would urge my colleagues uh, to support that. 
if that doesn't pass, if we're not able to reach three votes, I will happily vote for Mr. Hurd's uh, motion because it's really important to me that we get some paint on the ground this fall. Do, do the common elements of the two plans, I don't care. Get something done. Um, we cannot wait into a long-term solution. So um, thank you, Madam Chair, for indulging me. I, I, there was so many points I, I needed to make and I was, I was waiting to make them until after I heard from the public. So uh, I appreciate your indulgence. No, oh, and I apologize. The, I've been having, uh, it says internet is not stable or something like that. So I, I mis misheard your remarks. And so I, I truly apologize for that. And I agree, you know, I, I wanna do something, get something done here tonight. Um, I, I feel voting for option one doesn't mean I'm not voting for option two in the future. Um, because I think there's still a lot of, um, Things that need to be looked at from within um, our transportation planner, our traffic engineer, exactly, you know, what is the right fix? What is the cost? What's the different pools of uh, money that we get, whether it's through MassDOT, whether it's through the town? And I also, you know, um, having sitting on long range planning committee, which Mr. DeCourcy chairs. Um, we have a very scary override coming for us, and um, I want to make sure that what we do up here at, and I live right down the street from S. Ave. and Appleton, and I've seen it. I mean, I've seen autism kids, I've seen bicyclists. The big thing is speed on everybody's part, not the pedestrian. But, um, but I think what's in option two right now, the, there are some more specifics that really need to be investigated and so that when we do come out with the ultimate solution that will solve probably 85% of the problem, there's gonna be that 15%, you couldn't have predicted it. So, um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm on a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd for discussion to adopt option two, which is, I think my colleagues know what that is. So Attorney Heim. And Madam Chair, if I may, I just want to be clear that it takes a majority to uh, pass a successful motion. So if we don't get a majority, we don't get a majority. Um, with that, uh, Mr. Hurd? No. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? No. Okay, it's a 2 2 vote. The motion doesn't carry. Mrs. Mahan? I, if I may? Who is that? I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Hurd? Yep. Um, so I'll with renew the motion that I made originally the, to adopt option one tonight and direct the town manager to have our planning department conduct the traffic study for, for the area. And I just do want to reiterate, and I know this has been ad nauseum and I think everyone on the board is in agreement on this, but my concerns with, with the two options are safety concerns. And I think there are safety concerns that we can flesh out and we can address by fusing the two plans. And I think taking a few weeks to look at the area and try to address those concerns to a final plan that we will ultimately see, which I can almost guarantee that we'll have some additional, it's not the parking study is not gonna just say, all right, people using those parking spaces, let's stick with our option one. I can guarantee the public, I'm one person on this board, but a plan will come back with additional safety measures and additional striping and, and additional matters that are not currently in option one. It's just, I think in order to really get the best solution for this intersection, the best short-term solution, short-term, long-term solution until we can get the light. I, I think this is the best course of action. Okay, uh, motion by Mr. Hurd to um, adopt uh, option one as a first step of a multi-step process. Originally, Mr. Diggins, you seconded it. Um, will you still want to second that? I'll second it. Okay, and a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. 
It's a four zero uh, one vote. Mr. DeCourcy did not participate. Thank you. And um, I'll take a very strict, I have to take a, like a six minute break. And then when we come back, thankfully for all my colleagues, I will no longer be your chair for this evening. So I promise just like, if I can do it in five, I'll do it in five. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Dan. It's close to 11. Can I take off my suit coat? I, I, I'm not sure if Steve is going to try to hold fast to the 11 o'clock cutoff. Mr. Diggins, are you? Um, yes. I think this is not substantial. Are you? Are you have an MBTA deadline? Well, I don't know to what extent we should discuss this, but I mean, my feelings are you have a quorum with four. And I'm serious about that. I mean, I'm, I'm totally fine um, bailing out. I shouldn't use that term. I'm totally fine with you all continuing the meeting um, for the rest of the issues uh, without me. I mean, I, I really wanted to vote on this one. It, uh, uh, so if, if we were in a position where this was coming up, I would ask, well, maybe can we push this one back? It, um, to another meeting time, yeah, but the rest of the issues is with, if you all want to carry on, I'm totally fine with that because that's the whole purpose of a quorum is that I mean, if you have enough people to conduct business, conduct business, you know? I, 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 not that anybody's saying anything uh, inappropriate. Just want to make sure you all know we're still broadcasting and everybody on the Zoom can sure. hear the sure. conversation. Well, Just, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with what I said. I mean, I'm, it's fine with being part of the record, I mean, but I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. So, Mr. DeCourcy, I'm not sure if you heard, but Ms. Uh, Mahan asked for a five-minute break. She stepped away and will come back shortly. Okay, okay. No, thank you. We, we had talked about before, after this item, taking a short break. So, that, that, that's fine. Yeah, I, I'll wait for Mrs. Mahan to return. I do want to talk to the board about moving some things and, and clearly at seven minutes of 11, we're not going to get through our agenda tonight. So I will, um, if you can stick around for a few minutes, Mr. Diggins, we may have an alternative proposal here on a few of the items to sure. push things off and, um, for, sure. for a week or so. But let, let's, I want to wait until everybody's here to discuss that. Oh, sorry about the yawning. I'm with you. Oh. Sorry for the, uh, it's, I'm old. I, the chair hit me in the wrong spot. <laughs> Okay, all right, so everybody is back. Um, and and th thank you, Mrs. Mahan, for, for running that, that portion of the, um, of the meeting. We've got four items plus correspondence received. Before I get to the next agenda item, what I would like to propose to the board, um, I, we're not gonna have adequate time to discuss the opera funding. If board members are available next Monday, what I would like to do is schedule a meeting next Monday to discuss that. Um, I want to talk about 15 and 16 briefly. 15, I was thinking of seeing if board members would be interested in bifurcating that discussion. There are basically, there's a proposal to remove three trees that are necessary to be, be removed because of MWRA work. There's an additional nine trees that are outside of that. Um, we could attempt to do the three trees tonight, I know the public can, can weigh in on that, but um, I, I guess I'd ask the board members if one, if they're comfortable with that. I don't wanna get into that agenda item yet, just to see if we're comfortable trying to do that, to get that part of it done tonight. 
because it, that that aspect of it is somewhat time sensitive. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Hurd. Is it appropriate to ask Mr. Rodmarker when the work is set to start for the three trees? Sure. Good, thank you. Um, the, uh, this is Mike Rodemacher, Director of Public Works. The, the work is gonna start, is proposed to start this week. Now the work this week won't necessarily require the removal of those trees, but I didn't want the visual of work happening before the vote was taken, but the work that occurs this week would, would not require the trees to come down. They would need to come down in the next two to three weeks. Okay. And, and that's the three trees, Mr. Rodemacher, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Sorry, it would be my, I don't know if you're taking comments from the pause right now, but I'd be fine to actually take up that issue tonight. I think we can extend of given, we can bifurcate it, take up the issue of the three trees if they wouldn't want to start the work without knowing that we've agreed to remove the trees. Okay. All right. Any other members have any thoughts on that? Mr. Diggins? Oh, I can stay until 1130, you know, uh, I don't know if I'll be coherent until 1130, but I can stay until 1130, you know, and, 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 um, and I, I'll just ask me that, that uh, maybe we can get a commitment to um, next Monday, because uh, if we don't get that, then I'd like for us to do the schedule um, for October and November before I need to leave. That's a request. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Okay. So, Based on that, Mr. Helmuth or Mrs. Mahan, do you have any comments on that? Or are you comfortable attempting to bifurcate the, the two issues on the trees? Yes, no, I am. Not, I am too. I, I can't go to 11.30. I'm up at 3.30 and first men start at four, so. All right, so let, let's try to, to get this done quickly and, and we won't go past 11.15. If we don't get it done, we'll, we'll push it to, to, to a week from Monday. Um, okay, so I, I will announce now item 15. Proposed removal of trees, Broadway Plaza project, Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. And again, just, just for background, um, Mr. Rademacher prepared a memo for us. There are three trees within an area to be excavated by the MWRA to complete work on a large water main. My understanding is that there was a presentation to the tree committee. This aspect of the presentation was not objected to. There were concerns about the remainder so um, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Rodemacher and Mr. Chapdelaine um, for a presentation on the three trees. Thank you. Um, you you summarized that very well. The, the, the Broadway Plaza project, um, ultimately we're, we're asking for the removal of more than three trees, but three are more immediately needed to be removed so the MWRA can do its water main work. Uh, the trees are within the 10 or 10 or so feet of the water line and an area that needs to be excavated. Uh, the work that needs to occur this week is for Verizon to move some fiber optic duct out of the way so MWRA can do its work in the, in the following weeks. Uh, and the remaining nine trees to be discussed are more for the constructability of the plaza and, and there's less of an urgency to decide upon those trees. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ronnebacher. Before we open it up to the board, is there any members of the public, because this is a tree hearing that wish to speak just on the three trees that are above the MWRA easement for the water main? There is one hand raised, uh, Mr. Chair of John Sanba Matsu, and now Susan Stamps, two hands raised. Okay, so why don't we start with Mr. Sanba Matsu. Uh, hello, uh, thanks for having my comment. Um, I just can't believe that this town is uh, is planning to take down more trees. I understand that these the three trees might, uh, you know, for whatever to put in the water may, may maybe that's that's necessary. Um, but I, I was appalled to, to be at that uh, part of the town uh, yesterday and to see those signs on those locust trees. And I just I just <laughs> urge the select to 
take into account the number of trees that have come down in recent years and to um, prevent more from being lost. And I, I just will uh, say my last sentence, you know, reread the, the, the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. And uh, it's a lot of wisdom in that book. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Susan Stamps is next. Good evening, Ms. Stamps. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, okay. The all right, got it. Uh, very, very sorry. Um, yeah, I'm on the tree committee. I was at the meeting on uh, last Wednesday when Mike um, uh, came and presented the plan. We appreciated him very much doing that. Um, we did agree that you got to take the three trees down for the MWRA. He made a good case for that. As far as the remaining nine trees, um, we do, we asked him to go back to the drawing board and see if he could figure out a way to design the plaza so that those uh, nine um, mature trees that provide a lot of shade, cooling, and, and uh, flood control um, to remain. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I think that is it on public comment. So um, I will now open it up uh, to the board for discussion. Um, and I will start with Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make a motion to bifurcate the requests that are in our materials and move to approve the removal of the three trees needed for the MWRA work and table the requests for the remaining trees to a further meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, Mr. Diggins. I'll second that. No further discussion. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. No discussion. Happy to support. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Um, yes, I definitely will be supporting that. If I could just ask one brief question, which I believe Mr. Rademacher will also say at our next meeting about the remaining nine trees, but just where it was brought up several times this evening. Um, if I could, through you, Mr. Chair, ask Mr. Rademacher, um, last year, how many trees did the town of Arlington take down and how many trees did we plant? Uh, I, I don't have last year's, I have this year's uh, number to date and we have planted approximately um, 210 trees and removed about 80. And I expect both of those numbers to double over the course of this calendar year. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want, and, and I would, I'm sure Mr. Rademach is gonna, do that at the next meeting that we have for more detail. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. Uh, I just, I read your, your memo to us and I just wanna, if we, we could discuss that at point again at the next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And uh, I also support Mr. Hurd's motion. Just a question for Attorney Heim, where this was a hearing, do we have to select a date certain to continue this to for the remaining nine trees? I think you have either option, uh, Mr. Corsi. The, the basically the law under Chapter 87 requires only the 48 hours notice um, of the open meeting law if there's an objection to a tree removal. So you certainly could continue the hearing, or you could just notice it, you know, as a fresh hearing on those on a more limited project. I, I think either one would suffice in this case. Not, and if we did that for next Monday, for example, because we. The, the opera discussion will be somewhat sensitive. We could notice it this Thursday without a problem then. That's right. Okay, all right, thank you. So um, I have no further comments then. So in a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins for the, uh, the removal of the three trees only, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. To unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Thank um, you very much. Okay, so as I mentioned, we will put the opera funding discussion off um, until next Monday. There was one other item. Um, it's 11.05, that took a little quicker than I thought. Um, 
item 16, I believe this will be a very quick discussion. So I'm gonna take a chance and go for it given the 1115 rule, which is a request for stop signs in Thompson. Um, I can speak to this briefly um, because I, in, in our package was a, um, a letter from, from a resident Sue Bullock to other neighbors around the Thompson School requesting stop signs um, at the intersection of, of Everett, Patrick, and um, Wellesley. And we have a memo there from Officer Rateau suggesting we change our traffic rules and orders to allow for the installation of stop signs there. Um, so with that, I, I visited the site, seems to make sense to me. I will open it up to the board um, and I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move um, the recommendation from Officer Corey Rateau to amend our traffic rules and orders that stop signs be placed at the following locations, Patrick Street for westbound traffic at Everett Street, Wellesley Road for eastbound traffic at Everett Street. Sorry, my mouth's not working. Thank you, Mr. Mon. Mr. Hurd. Second. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm gonna support it. I'm just, it's just not really clear on what we are amending, but I, I will look into that. I mean, cause I'm fine with, with the, with putting a stop sign there, you know, so. Okay, Mr. Chapterling, do you wanna just clarify that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So yeah, very briefly, um, this intersection is not a T intersection, so it doesn't have to meet the MUTCD required warrants for the placement of stop signs and Officer Rateau described these two road ends as implied stops, meaning that the way traffic or you know rules of the road work because it basically ends at another street, it's an implied stop, meaning no study had to go into it. There was no analysis that would, was required, but to create an enforceable stop sign, Officer Rateau's recommendation was that it needed to be inserted into the traffic rules and orders. Thank you, I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Helmut. Thank you, I'm happy to support this. And I, I in addition to thanking Officer Rateau for his fine work as usual, I, I wanna express my gratitude to the residents who wrote to us, uh, alerting us to the situation. And um, and I and, and thank you as well to Mr. DeCourcy and to the town manager for uh, for taking swift action. It's it's wonderful when we're able to do that. And um, and I just wanted to, to point that out and to, and to thank everyone involved. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Yeah, and I, I also want to thank the, the, the residents in that area. Um, and then I did receive follow up from them too before the meeting. So on a motion um, by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmut. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's the unanimous vote. And um, it's 1108, so I did believe Mr. Diggins, you would like to talk about meetings for at least October and November. Yes, I, I thought that was on the agenda, so yeah. Oh, the agenda. Yeah, no, I, 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 I just am concerned about time, but I think- Yeah, it, yeah, 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 I think we need to, yeah, we can settle. I understand what you get in because we are gonna be at Monday. Yeah, but let's go ahead and settle, work that out. I appreciate it, thanks for asking. Sure, so we'll work it, we'll work it out now. Yeah. Okay, so if people, if we look at our calendars for October and November, if there are any dates that, um, let's start with October. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. are, are, we, are, we, so are we meeting next week as well? Or meet next week because I think it's important for Mr. Chapterling to make what is still the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Public yeah. initial okay, yeah. opera detailed presentation. All right, and we established a quorum for that meeting. I'm sorry? Have we established a quorum is available for that meeting? I, I think people said that they were available. Yeah. Right. My apologies. Thank you. Does it work for you? Yeah. Yes. It's fine for me. Okay. Yeah. And Mr. Diggins? I see. Yes. Yes. But I think maybe my colleague's question is, are we also going to have the meeting on the 27th? Is that what you're getting at, Mr. Hellman? No, but it's a good question. Yeah. We're still going to have the meeting on the 27th. Okay. So we're adding a meeting. Yeah. Which okay. is fine. The for me. meeting will be, I, I'm anticipating a lot of discussion on opera. Yeah. And I, want to run into a situation where we're yeah, absolutely yeah. Devote sure. sufficient time to it. yeah thank you okay all right so bearing in mind that we'd be meeting on the 27th um any dates that uh, people want to propose for october yeah 
I suggest something. I mean, given given the, the schedule that I understand for us needing to make a decision need about precincting, the precincting lines um, before the 30th, but also um, realizing that we'll probably need as much time as possible to do that. I mean, I'm thinking that we'll need a meeting on the 25th, I mean, but so I'm kind of working backwards I mean, from, from that. I mean, and so and then it's really a matter of where we land the meeting before that, because we have Columbus Day, I'm sorry, Indigenous Peoples Day on the 11th. I mean, so either we would shift the meeting that that week to a different day of the week, I mean, or we pick the 18th or the 4th. So if we did the 25th, since we are meeting the 27th, how would people feel about meeting on the 13th on a Wednesday um, in October? That's what I was going to suggest. So that works for me. Fine with me. Fine with me. Okay, Mr. Dickens. In honor of our former colleague, Mr. Dunn, who liked to schedule Wednesday meetings, we'll schedule one today. Okay. Uh, the second Wednesday of the month is just a really, I mean, it's a difficult day for me. It, uh, uh, and there's all, I mean, these meetings come before TAC, me, but it is, uh, it seems like everyone else can do it. I'll do it. it uh, yes. Okay. Choices, right. thank, yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dickens. Sure. Let, let's just do October. Uh, yeah. I we just did October. November. Um, how, how is the 8th and the 22nd? Yeah. Works for me. Fine for me. Okay. All right. So we don't read that we don't need a vote on that. So we will meet next week for, for opera. And I think we will try to add the tree hearing. So we'll just do those two things. And then we'll have a regular meeting on the 27th, October 13th, October 25th, November 8th, and November 22nd. Um, and with that, I will move on to items 19 and 20, correspondence received. I'll take them both together. Um, number 19, dangerous intersection at Victoria Road, Dimitri Hoffmeyer, 21 Johnson Road. Uh, item 20, safety concerns on Elmhurst Road and surrounding streets in LaRue and Pam Wolfson. Um, do we have a motion from? Motion to receive both items and refer them to the town manager's office to determine the appropriate place to follow up. Mr. Hurd, do we second? Second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Any further comment from anyone? All right, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, new business. Attorney Heim? No new business, thank you. Mr. Chapterline? Uh, I don't have any new business tonight. I, I do want to mention that Joanne Preston has been sending me messages via the Q&A that she had tried to raise her hand for the tree hearing agenda item, but it didn't work and now has her hand raised. Um, I, I think, well, I, I will leave it to your discretion, but I wanted to make sure that was on record that she was expressing that concern to me. Okay, I, I, I think it's unfortunate on that. We will, I know she wants to speak on at least on the remaining nine trees and we will put her at the top of the list um, for that discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Helmut? No new business. Mr. Diggins? Even if I did, no. Mr. Hurd? I have no new business, but I did want to remind our town council that there is a mask mandate in the publicly accessible areas of town hall. So just for next meeting. I'm gonna get him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the illusion's gone. <laughs> Magic. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, very briefly, if I could um, ask the town manager, I, only because I promised this on probably five different lists, a lot of parents complaining about the 77, 79 bus, kids trying to get to the high school, kids trying to get Matin on. Um, and and I, I've seen it myself because I'm up by Mass Ave in Appleton. The buses come down and sometimes when they see the volume of students there, they're not stopping. So uh, if you could perhaps coordinate with Dr. Holman, I believe is the superintendent of schools. Yeah, so I've, I've spoken with Dr. Holman last week about this issue and Representative Garbally today. 
who's been advocating uh, advocating um, on behalf of the town to the general manager of the MBTA. And he, we've been promised uh, relief or an increase, but I'm gonna, I'll continue to follow up on it and see what's possible. Right, just, just in light of the amount of money we pay in our MBTA assessment, I know we say this over and over again. I don't know if somebody, you know, someone in Attorney Hines office um, can look at something that similar to what um, we did with Mugar and then if people came to the table, but th there's gotta be something. So anyways, thank you. I, I apologize. I just promised so many parents I would raise it and I'm done. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And just very briefly um, on Mugar, we learned today from Mugar that they have hired a contractor for the cleanup. The cleanup is expected to commence next Monday. So uh, we will report back, but I, I received that word through the town manager today and that um, looks like um, it's going to happen and hopefully it will be completed by the end of the month. Um, so with that, I uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Two, two, second. Motion by Mr. Diggin, seconded by Mr. Mrs. Mahan. Attorney Heim. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? I just want to say sometimes I feel like a mister, but yes. Oh, did I say mister? I did. My, my... No, seemed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. <laughs> it's unanimous vote. Okay, thank you.